Yo, what up, news boys? It's about to happen. Hang on, hang on. Okay, yes. In true, look at me. Look at my disaster of a room. Oh my god, it looks like fucking shit in here. I'm like, my OCD is like, I gotta go pick those cables. It's a fucking disaster. Trevor and I just got uh, disconnected from a call. I think he's gonna hop on it at literally any second. I don't know what's taking him so long. How are you guys? What's happening out there, everybody? We're fucking doing it. Chair's okay. Chair's fine. Don't worry about chair. You missed News Voice for the first time last week. Zach, forgive me. No, I don't forgive you. Uh, but I'll get over it. Um, what up, Zach, you sexy mofo? How was your day? I missed the stream earlier. Dude, played some Demon Souls. So uh, everyone's invited to come to Collective Souls, which is, uh, I don't know, three times a week, twice a week. I used to be do it five times. Oh, here we go. Here's Trevor's Zoom link. Let me fucking pull this shit in. Here we go. Um, but I'm loving the PS5. I'm loving, I'm loving Demon Souls. It's fantastic. Here we go. Hang on. Trevor should be arriving any minute. Launch the meeting. What's happening? My Zoom not opening? Here it comes. Sorry, dudes. Join with video. He's got to let me in. You fucking boomer. Do I have to call him to tell him to let me into the meeting? Ridiculous. Nope, I don't. Here we go. Boom. What up, dude? Can you hear me? I don't know if he sees me or hears me. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? I can't hear. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I can't hear. Uh-oh. All right, I'm going to I'm going to real quick just just cuz it's driving me insane. Oh, here we go. Now I can hear you. What's up, dude? How are you? Good. Newsboys. Newsboys. Flagship show. Flagship. Here it is. It's the all happening. The flagship show, the show to which all others are compared, the Bellwether program. Oh, okay. It looks like they updated our uh, our PCP here. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. It shows that we're almost up to 75. Nice. We're, which is about accurate. I think we might be even a little higher than this says. But Nice. That's good. And also, this is calibrated to 375, and I think we need to just, now, we just need to get to 300, so I think we Well, there's to, taxes in there, too. We have okay, to so that. 375 is still the same. It's probably okay. safe, yeah. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is it. Here we go. This is, what, the 15th episode? Are we up that high? Is that where we are? I have no idea. The 15th episode of Newsboys. This is, um, you know, we've said it before, but, you know, sometimes, you know, we never know how many people are new here. Um, you know, uh, there's this is the crown jewel um, of programming in the whitest kid empire. Um, we have shows every night of the week, mm -hmm. almost. Um, but uh, the difference between this show and all the others. Pardon is that, me, everybody, for this audio thing. Sorry, Trevor. Keep going. You're good. No, I was just saying the difference between this show and all the other ones is that, uh, and I've said this before, but when Zach and I come out here on Friday nights, we uh, we put the whole team on our shoulders. <laughs> By the uh, way, they, those guys, a lot of people probably think we're assholes for saying this every week. They they love it. Okay, the other guys eat it up. So uh, don't don't cry for them. Yeah. Um, so that's what it is. That's what time it is. That's what's going on. Um, we're uh, here. I have not really been paying attention to the news this week. Dude, uh, I know I'm nothing. Sorry. I'm a little flustered. I just got in the door, so I'm. I'm oh, okay. Uh, All good. As, as a matter of fact, I actually think I left something out of my car. I have to go get. I'm guessing that the thing you left in your car here. Here, let's see how well I know you. The thing you idea. left in your car <laughs> is a vape-related thing. <laughs> yeah, it's the vape. I yeah, left go it. get your so, vape. I'm, all right, I'll go be right get back. it. Bye. Unreal. Um, do I know him or what? Uh, wow, Zach, Wrecked was so good. Yeah, so my old show, I'm going to do a quick plug here for Wrecked. I have a show called Wrecked. Uh, it went for three seasons on TBS. It was better than your average TBS show. Nobody watched it. 
But now you can see it on HBO Max. So if you want to see more of all this on a desert island, go watch Wrecked. It's free. Uh, what do you guys think? I actually like HBO Max, and I um, no one's paying me to say that. I, I by the way, Wrecked could be huge. Thousands, millions of people could watch it. Wouldn't give me an extra penny in my in my pocket. So so no one's telling me to plug this. I I think HBO Max is kind of rad. There's like good movies on there. I love the fucking shows. I'm, I'm into it. Um, wrecked him, damn near killed him. I get that joke. I fucking know what you're saying, man. Zach, clean your room. No shit, dude. So my room's a disaster. Usually I stream from where the TV is, but I just got that TV. I put that in. So I had to flip the whole thing around. It's a total mess in here. You can see where that's where I don't work out. That's where my weights are that I don't use. There's my art table for paintings that I, I don't paint. I haven't painted in like a year. Uh, it's, it's not a pretty picture in here. Now you can see my fucking, look at this shit. It's just a, it's just, there's so much crap in here. What else am I going to do? I got nowhere else to go, guys. Messy room, make it a bigger mess. You know what they say? Clean desk, sick mind. You ever heard that expression? I like that expression. Clean desk, sick mind. Not me, man. My desk looks like a fucking disaster. Laundry machine is better than chair. Disagree, but very cool. I'll take it. Messy bed, messy life. That I do think is true. I think if your bed is dirty and messy, it fucks your whole shit up, right? Like, I don't understand. And I used to be like this. When I was a dude in my 20s, I would wash my sheets every two months, which is disgusting. Uh, when I was living alone. When I, when I was living with my girlfriend, I, you know, she would wa- tell me when to wash them and I would wash them. But what the fuck? What's the viewership? What's with the viewership? I don't know. What is, what's, I have no idea how many people are watching. I no longer can see that sort of a thing. What do we got? We got nobody? Are we low? What's with the viewership in this fucking stream? 773? Yeah, it's not great. I don't give a fuck. What microphone do you use? This is a, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a MXL. It's good. It's a good mic. My mic is quiet. Let me turn it up for you, my friend. How's that? It's a, Better? It's a cardioid mic, is it not? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's that's a that's a a word cardioid mic that I haven't heard in many many years. All right, sorry about that. I had to go get uh, my vape thing. Um, Eight hundred. Okay, it's getting close to Christmas. People are maybe leaving town for the holidays. We can do better than eight hundred though. Um, I mean, we had over ten, last Saturday. Let's talk about this. We had over ten thousand viewers on Self Suck Saturday. We had damn close to eleven thousand. Did we really? Yeah. Um, and uh, but it was because we were on the front page. Mm-hmm. And then I also think we did a bad job. Oh, people uh, were people were giving us so much shit for last Saturday. Mm-hmm. People were like, they were people were outraged. They're like. They're on the front page. They get 10,000 viewers. And what do they do? Do they watch sketches and do commentary? No, they draw pictures of Timmy's butthole. It's like, yeah. Oh, they say they, I can't, I'm, not on the, I'm not on the thing. It's just you. Oh, shit, dude. Might be, might be. Um, I was wondering why people were like, Zach's narcissist stream. Yeah, yeah, I am acting like Sam. I'm sleeping on the job here. Uh, I got it. Um, yeah, like people were upset, but that's also, I mean... We are nothing if not self-sabotaging. Like people sure. should know that by now. Like, we always have know. been. Yeah. Like, uh, of course, like when we get, you know, a, a big shot on the front page, we're going to fuck it up. That's, that's what the charm is. I don't think we fucked it up, though. I got to be honest. Like, I think that, uh, I think that's who we are. I think that the fans that we made that never saw this stream before, that like mm-hmm. liked it, they're not going anywhere. That's what I think. Maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just talking. I have no fucking idea. Uh, How you doing? How, how's your week? What else is going on? New Buckerson and Myers came out this week. That was a pretty good one. Was a um, good one. We, how was your week? My week was insane. It was yeah. like, this was kind of the last week of like actual, for people who don't know, people in Los Angeles shut down now. I feel like. Like this is this today was like the last day of work for this town. And now yep. a, any excuse showbiz has to be lazy. Now I'm way louder. Sorry, dudes. 
any any anytime show business people can be lazy, they will. So I feel like from now until January 10th, no one's going to do anything. Yeah. Um, so I just had to fucking grind and get some shit turned in. But I'm done, and I feel I feel good. That's great. I feel free. Yeah, I'm the opposite. Oh, they say, they're saying I'm quiet now. God damn you people. Um, All right. I turned you up. Okay. Yeah. So I like, I thought I was done and I was like cramming. And then I just got notes today that just blew up my whole weekend. So, so you have to write uh, through the weekend? Straight through. Is it due uh, Monday? Yeah. So Is it uh, brutal notes. Um, it's 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 a weekend killer. It's a weekend uh-huh. killer. Brutal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and then the other thing is like this week I've um I've stopped being able to sleep, which sucks. Um, because I uh my, I, my I think it's the stress of you know trying to get everything done before the end of the year, but my back hurts. Oh, no. Um, and like I can't sleep for more than forty five minutes without waking up. And so what normally I would do because I'm a tall person, so I have back problems. Um. Normally what I would do, like if it got this bad is I would go to like a spa or something and try to get like a massage to like, you know, or like a chiropractor, try to get it like worked out, but I'm not going to do this now. Like, I don't want anyone touching my back, like, uh, with, uh, the fucking COVID, right. you know? So I don't know. I, you just got to sit and take it. What about, what about your wife? Does she give you a massage ever? Does that work? No. Why? I don't know. I never asked her. <laughs> You're just like, no. You're just no. like so decisive. It would never work, Zach. Um, here's my thing. Here's a little something about me. I have had in my life mm, three massages, three professional uh-huh. massages. I can't mentally, I can't do it. Like, this is why really? I could never go to a prostitute. It's like, I, I got the idea of like taking my shirt off and laying down and having someone just like, like, work on my body to give me I, I know it's not a sexual thing i get that it, has right. not, it really has nothing to do with it but just like in my mind it's like they don't want to be doing this they don't want to be touching my gross hairy pimply back you know what i mean that's disgusting like they'd rather be doing anything in the world and i just feel so uncomfortable like i have this huh. mental block where i'm just like i just wanted to end for them you know what i mean like yeah I, the idea that these disgusting gross old men can go in and like just be like rub me it's just like, I, I don't get it, dude. Well, I think it's like, I mean, like, uh, like how disgusting is your back? I mean, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> even if it wasn't disgusting, I'd probably still have the same. Somebody says small dick energy, Zach. That's exactly right. In fact, this is like the most small dick energy thing uh, I could think of. Well, let, let me ask this. Can you um, can you shit at like a mall? No. Yeah. In fact, dude, there's, here's another small there's something dick energy connected. Thing there's me. something uh, I, I can't pee at a urinal if, if there's somebody at the urinal next to me. I like really? I have to wait. Wow. In fact, I remember I was at a Broadway show once with my girlfriend's father, uh, and her obviously. And mm-hmm. and I remember I had to pee so bad. And the intermission came, and I like waited in line with like hundreds of dudes. And I and I I get in the bathroom, and it's just like packed. And I'm at a urinal, and her dad is like next to me, and I like I couldn't release it. I couldn't do it. It was just like so. Wow. Awkward. And finally, I was just like, well, I, I'm going to pretend I'm done. I like flushed the thing and I like washed my hands. I went back to the seat and I watched the second half of the show. Just like, I'm going to piss my fucking pants. You're like, ah, that was a good pee. Yeah. And you're like. I, I, and I still to this day, I'm like, does he think, does he, did he know? Was he like, this guy not peeing? What kind of well, he's sick probably, man goes yeah, he's to like, the toilet and doesn't pee in it? He's pretending so he can look at my fucking dick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, dude. One time, and another, here's, a, here's a good massage story. This is not mine, but, but I don't think Brian would have an issue with me. So Brian Saka, he's, he's one of my co-stars on Wrecked. If you've seen the show, he's the, he's the bearded guy, kind of, kind, of, kind of a short roly-poly guy with a beard. So his, his wife is from uh, Hungary. And so he, he would go to Hungary to visit her dad. And one day her dad took him Isn't to- Isn't it funny that there's a country called Hungary and a country he, called Turkey? Yeah. And they're real yeah. close to each other. Real yeah, weird. yeah. Go, go ahead. Um, took him to this massage parlor. This is my nightmare, dude. To, so, so he's there with his like his his girlfriend's dad, who he like doesn't know very well. And he goes to this Hungarian massage parlor, mm-hmm. and they're like in the lobby, and he's like a little uncomfortable. And this big giant like 
imagine bald bull or like some video game character is just like a a, a bald hairy beast comes right. out and is like points him it's like you come and and so Brian like follows him he said it looked like he was in the movie Hostel everything's mm-hmm. tile and like Cold War and he like goes into this room and there's no door in the massage room and he's like yeah. he's like close off. And so Brian like takes off his like shirt and his pants. He's got his underwear, and he's like under off, you know. And he's like everything off. He's like off. He's like okay. So he, he like gets naked. He puts a towel on. The guy lays him on this thing, pulls the towel off. So Brian's just laying face down naked. He says, but the door's open. People are like right. walking by, and this dude is like massaging him. And then he like rolls him over. So Brian's like laying face up with his his dick out. People yeah. walking by, and the guy yeah. starts massaging his thighs. And he said, as he's like massaging his thighs, like really painful, by the way, this whole thing he said is like the worst massage. It's just pain. As he's massaging his thighs, he says his dick started going like this, you know, because like he's like jiggling him. So his penis is like flopping back and forth. He's like, he's like just laying out, looking, his dick is slapping both legs. People are walking by the open doorway. He's just like, what the fuck do I do? I mean, like, was the guy mad? He's like, make dick stop flapping. (laughs) Come. Calm dick down. <laughs> Not that type massage. <laughs> That's my offensive Hungarian accent. Fuck them. Fuck Hungarian people. They can all suck me. Um, Jay, give me a wow, Zach. I don't get one for that, really. <laughs> um, dude, well, I was in Mexico. I feel, with, what? I feel like if I got flipped, where well, they were going to flip you over, I'd be like, can I get a towel or something? Okay, you know? so I would, think, I would think that too, right? Yeah. Then I get... I go to Mexico. We were doing publicity for Rex, so they 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 put us up at some some schmancy resort in Mexico, and I get a free massage. This is one of the three massages of my life. So I go to the massage, and it's this whole experience, like a massage, and then you go through the spa, and it's like this big mm-hmm. spa with like seven rooms, and like you have a personal handler who like takes you from room to room, and is like your guide. Like now you go in here for this long, and they, it's totally ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So I. I I'm I'm in my my trunks and the guy who's my handler is like he's like he points at my my trunks he's like no and I'm like no oh and I'm like I'm in Mexico I don't fucking know it's a different culture down here like I'm not allowed I have to be naked okay so I'm yeah like, free ball Mexico yeah so I'm naked I got a towel and he takes me to like this spa and he like holds my towel and I like go in naked and he like you know then he takes me to the next room and it's a cold plunge so I have to like he's in the room I have to like go into this cold plunge I get out. Mm-hmm. ice cold i've got some major shrinkage and he like hands me my towel i'm just like it feels also weird like do i do i like cover my dick with my hands whenever i'm right. in front of this guy or do i is that like little dick energy i don't know what to do he takes me to another room where i have to like lay on my back and then he comes and like tap. it's like so weird but by the end of it i'm just like i don't know this he seems cool that who the fuck cares so then the final room is this big pool with like all these waterfalls going into it so i just get in the thing and there's other people in this one. It's like the final kind of congregation. And I see Brian is like mm-hmm. under a waterfall. So I swim over to him and I'm sitting next to him. And we're talking for like a while. And then at a certain point, I'm like, isn't it weird that they make you naked? He's like, huh? I'm like, they, they make you be naked. He's like, are you naked, dude? And I'm like, yeah, are you not naked? He's like, no, I'm not naked. Like nobody's naked. I'm the only <laughs> naked person. He made me go through this uh... whole process fucking buck ass naked. That's hilarious. So he's sucks. just like, he's like hazing you. Yeah. He told me I had to be. Ridiculous. <laughs> Did I ever tell you, uh, I told you the story about when we went to New Orleans, right? I don't know. Tell me again. I'm so listening. We're driving, I'm going to get a drink. We're driving from, uh, I believe it was, it was, uh, I forget where it was, but it might have been Florida to New Orleans. We were doing this like all night drive. Oh, wait, was I there for this? Maybe you weren't. And maybe it was like when you guys performed in New Orleans, I wasn't there. Okay. So we were we're we're driving all night and we rent and we rented this small like piece of shit car. And I'm like crammed up in the front seat and like, you know, we've been on the road for a little bit and my back is like killing me. And I'm like, I don't I I, I don't know what I gotta get my back worked on when we get to New Orleans. Like, you know, so it's getting late. I'm looking up like is there when I get there, is there anywhere I can go? I find a place that's open and I'm like, nah. You know, we're getting there at like 10, 1030. So I'm like, I don't know. Like this, this seems like, you know, you know, it's not like an all night place, but it's like, this could be shady that it's still open kind of thing. So I go there, like make the appointment, uh, you know, I call, I go up and I walk in and it's obviously 
a shady place. Like, like it's a, not, like a, a sex place. Yeah, yeah. It's obviously um, like you know, uh, you know. It's like they're they're, they're she's dressed weird, you know, like kind of. And so so I I start saying like. I'm like, I just want a normal massage, just normal massage. Been driving, back hurts like that, like that. She come in, I, I lie down, just work on uh, on my back, and then she's like, flip over, and I'm like, uh, I just want to say that I really, really, this is my back hurts. Like I'm here for my back. No judge. My, I'm, and, and and she goes, oh well, this is not that type of place. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know what? No harm to you, like you know, whatever. Like I'll, I'll just pay, like you know, and I'll leave. And she's like, "Your massage therapist is like, I don't know how to give a massage." Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Okay, you know what? It's fine. I'll just leave. You know, I'll give you the money." And she's like, "I can try." And I was like, "Would you?" <laughs> and that and is bless so her, sweet and funny, and, dude. And bless her heart, she tried. Was she good? It, no, terrible. <laughs> like it was like it was like doing nothing like, you know, like, and, and so I just did like five minutes and I was like, that's great. It feels great now. I feel good. Thank you. And I gave her like a huge tip and I left. Cause oh I was like, God. you know, like. What if there was a profession that men did that like was just a front for sex stuff? Like what if like a mechanic was really like, everyone just knew like, yeah, mechanics really just like suck you off. And then you go <laughs> and be like, yeah, no, my car is actually broken. He's like, oh, uh, all right. Like, I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of a messy analogy, but. Whatever. Well, isn't that's what like H and R Block is? That's exactly what I was trying to think of. Yeah. H and R Block. They don't do. They don't do. They don't uh, do taxes. Taxes. It's just. Dudes. It's just dudes blowing dudes. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> um. Okay. Here's a question. So if you if you were in an alternate reality, mm -hmm. you're you're you with your brain, but there's no no wife, no kid. You're a single man. Okay. Right. Shake the etch a sketch. Starting over. Do you think you could ever go to a prostitute? Am I? I mean, am I still a germaphobe? Like, how much? No, are let's take the, the germaphobe out of it. You're not a. So I'm not a germaphobe. I don't know. Maybe. I think it would depend a lot on uh, the situation. If I, if I, 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 not if I thought it was like, like then I get into your thing. Like if 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 it's a if it's like someone who's a prostitute, then you're kind of like, well, why are they doing this? Right. You know. You know that I think that would weigh on my conscience a little bit. Let's um, say you were in Amsterdam, where okay. it's like totally vetted. There. Someone says sex workers are the preferred nomenclature. So we're saying the wrong thing. Here. Oh, I apologize. Okay. That was yeah. an honest mistake. Sex worker. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, we are no, sh no, no shade to sex workers. I'm all. not that shaming not a sex worker. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying no. it's, yeah. No, I said no shade. Yeah. Yeah. No shade. Um, but there's, it's funny because some people would be like any, any, any work with a sex worker, you're, you're, you're contributing to human trafficking. It was like. I don't know. I, I truly I, don't know the answer to, to, to these sorts of things. You know, I've heard that a bunch too, but, uh, but I, th I feel like recently you're seeing a lot of things that that's not true. Um, like, who is that guy who owned that sports team that they caught? Like, um, you know, uh, there's a guy who's an old guy who, um, you know, got caught, caught in a massage place. Um, and uh, It wasn't Donald Sterling? No, right there, Robert Kraft. Somebody had it. Okay. So yes, Robert Robert Kraft. So, yeah. So he gets caught in a, uh, and I think it was like a tragic story too. It's like his wife had died like the year before. So like he's a lonely old guy. I don't know. Like he's you know. So he went to um, a massage place, and uh, they uh, like had video cameras hidden. They recorded him. Then they did a sting, they embarrassed the guy and they're like, yeah, well, th this was all, all these women were trafficked, you know? And then once people looked into it, they had to throw the whole thing out because it was like, they weren't trafficked. They're, you know, they're just, they're just people from around the, the town. Like, you know, like it wasn't, it was just all police bullshit. So. If, all right, well, let's, let's see if we can, in our hypothetical, it's the most ethical clean safe situation could you do it sounds like the answer is yes maybe yeah i don't know if yeah if i if i uh, yeah uh, yeah 
I but agree. that's a lot. It's no, and it has nothing to do with with anything other than my own neuroses. Mm. I just think I would be too. I'm too neurotic. But that's the but awkwardness we, are, would be more painful than the sex could possibly be pleasurable. So I, I guess I'm confused. Is what I thought the etch a sketch is like because if I'm not a the etch a sketch means like you're not betraying anyone. Right, but you also said I'm not a germaphobe anymore. Yeah, take that out of it too. Okay. Well, why don't you take your thing out? Well, because like I'm saying, that's that it's about the mental. I don't know. Great question. I don't know. Um. Somebody said, "Talk about because I heard about." Somebody this. says you are 65 year old nerds. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Somebody wrote about uh. There's something, Mastercard and Visa have canceled Pornhub, which we have a vested interest because we have a Pornhub account. Yeah, we, 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 we're trying to partner with Pornhub. We're Pornhub, <laughs> we're Pornhub hub titans. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rafflopian tubes, thanks, man. I see you going off. I appreciate it. But so they're, they're saying, I guess, like, I saw something on this this week. I did see this. They were like, like now MasterCard and Visa can't, you can't buy a Pornhub with that because they're saying Who the fuck that is it, buying Pornhub? It's no, free. I mean like an account or account or something like that. Why would anyone do that? No, no, people do it. But also, you know, you, you like tip people and stuff like that. On Pornhub? I, I guess I they're think. watching a live cam. Dude, I've never understood the appeal. That's another thing. Why would you want to watch a live cam? It's like, now it's all the awkwardness. Would you rather just watch like anonymous video from the past where there's just like no... Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. I know. I mean, I think there's different people. I think some people want to establish a relationship with somebody. Like, even if it's not a relationship, being like, oh, here's this person that I go and check. There's people watching this stream. You know, why wouldn't people want to watch a different kind of stream? Yeah, I get, I don't know. They start to feel like, they they start to feel like they get to know the person. Um, So anyway, but now MasterCard and Visa, they're not going to, um, uh, let people pay for things with that way anymore because they're saying that those sites um, encourage trafficking, which sounds like a bunch of horseshit. I mean, I don't know. I, I bet that they kind of do because it's like they can't vet like that every video that's submitted to those sites are not, you know, are, are above board. You know, there's got to be a ton of those things that where there are like straight up kidnapped women and in some situations, maybe men who are like forced into these videos or like strung out on drugs and like this is how i don't know i just i I think like there's something there i don't know there's like it it, it just seems very puritanical to me like you can't use a credit card for like uh your your porn sites anymore yeah i don't don't know know. um hey ron john i donated 100 bucks this morning he says another drop of pcp in the bucket not bad not bad thanks buddy uh tazu for counts- you just donated 50 bucks who says who's gonna match this gauntlet down and then pork sweats donated 50 bucks it says for the flagship show on the flagship channel here's another 15 episodes fuck yeah dude um hang on, i got four more tuna casperol donated he says zach i thought you'd like this stephen wright joke her eyes were a little close together like the headlights on a jeep i called her ac almost cyclops that's a comment on my very close together eyes thank you you fuck uh kanye is my favorite avenger donated he says who do you think killed jean benet ramsey great question we should get into that def mm. jam donated 15 bucks he says trevor i rented high in church this week on youtube and it was fantastic oh. where's oh, the best you. place to buy it online i don't know i mean i know comedy central has a portal that you could buy it from um i have no idea honestly uh nasty porch donated he says can i ask what trevor thinks of the term man cave i hate it yeah. Do they why? know that? I've talked about that before. You've talked to it words, about me, but I don't think you've talked about it on stream. I hate uh, Man Cave and I hate Hubby. And like, if if uh, anyone uses those, like, I just immediately seethe. Like, <laughs> I, What is it about the term Man Cave that you hate? It's just the lamest, like, it's just, just a broken man that would say that. <laughs> just a broken, like, you know like just whipped person that's like well she get i have a man cave it's like fuck you grow up like you know <laughs> um yeah i don't know and hubby it's just act I, I, oh it's the worst i yeah. just i can't stand it I, I hate him um also never never mind what, uh, what? no no <laughs> oh there's gonna be something good damn it it was just needlessly mean <laughs> um 
Uh, well, I just want to circle back to this pornography thing. Okay. Because if it's Pornhub now, does that mean it eventually? Because if you're if you're pulling the morality card and being like, oh, you can't buy this because of, of some sort of morality thing. Now you can't blame a a, um, um, a website for uh, user generated content on it. You they can try to, you, they should try to take all the stuff down. But I mean I think that's the whole thing where Trump is mad at Twitter and he wants to repeal that Act 230, which means like you can't hold Twitter responsible for things that people write on Twitter. Right. You know. So that's basically how all of e-commerce works. Like our our whole base our system of of um, you know, just the way that money works now is based based on that idea that like uh, so if you start doing that then it could start going into other where people are like well um you know this movie's violent you know they have a violent violent films on like you know it's like a slippery slope they could keep you know mm -hmm. once you start tying something to morality because uh, now also there's no jobs anymore nobody everything's gone like you're or half of everything's gone because of the virus and it's not coming back because uh, everything's being automated at the same time. We were already screwed because everything's being automated, but then this virus hits. So now, like the only way people can make money is by like doing like kind of like hustle and stuff like online, starting an Etsy store, doing like a, you know. The, only that's why fans. So, that's why there's so many people doing only fans right mm -hmm. now. Um, like, you know, what if, it, what if it goes to that? And it's like also, you know, people people should get mad at that because they don't realize this is the golden age of pornography right now. Um, it really like, is. Yeah, like when I was growing up, if there was a friend of yours that you wanted to see naked, you would you'd have to be very funny all the time, <laughs> and then basically you'd have to like bide your time and wait for it to work out when she's like between boyfriends and then you make a move. But like now you just go, like everyone's on OnlyFans. Like you can just go and see like whoever you have a crush on, like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, you know. Oh my God. And that could all go away. Um, do you remember the first time, I remember the first time I ever saw a piece of pornography. I was walking to school. I had to be in like sixth grade. I was walking mm -hmm. to school and I would, we'd walk through this like park like there was like a creek that kind of flowed through a park and we'd like cross the park. And I remember my friend Adam found a, a photograph that was torn in half. It was like a, it was like a, like a actual photo that like, you know, like someone had developed in a store was like their personal photograph. It wasn't mm -hmm. like torn out of a magazine. And it was like a woman, like a, a very heavy woman looking into the camera kind of like bewildered <laughs> like naked <laughs> i remember he's like check it out and it was like clearly like it was dark it was like something was fucked up about this photo but and he was like he was like i'm gonna keep it forever and i just remember looking at the photos and being like this is like this is a bad thing like it wasn't wow. even like it's bad to see naked women it was like this this, this is a bad like who tore this in half and left it in the park and like who yeah. is this woman and like is this around here is she one of these house it was yeah, who is this heavy woman? Why is she bewildered? <laughs> yeah, who took the photo? What? What? Why is it ripped up? Like, what is this? You ever uh, read Heavy Bewildered Babes? <laughs> yeah, I love that one. <laughs> that's a good. Uh, you know, that's the weird. Like, you, you, you're saying it's in the woods, right? Yeah, it was in the woods. So, like, when I I went to a very like conservative, um, you know, school, and we would have chapel every week, and um, and I remember. Like on Wednesday, you'd have chapel. And this one time, like the principal got up to talk to us about pornography. So me and my friends are like, this is already hilarious. This is great. <laughs> like, you know, this is the best thing that's happened at school today. We're like waiting for it. Like we know, like later they're going to talk about pornography. Like, great. Love it. Um, we get there and uh, the guy, the principal starts like, um, you know, being like, emotional like i made some mistakes you know like uh you know i went down the road of pornography and you know what? things like you know and uh and how he regret regretted it and everything and so then we're like you know trying not to laugh but like laughing like that and then he goes in his thing he's like me when i was a kid me and my buddy uh we had a bucket of pornography that we would bury out in the woods and then we'd go out and, there, and, and me and my friends were like what a bucket what? of pornography yeah he was like yeah we and then and every now and then we go out and we dig up that bucket <laughs> we don't fit it up. and my friends are just why like, a bucket 
we're slapping each other, <laughs> crying, laughing, and we all got like kicked out of the thing. You got kicked out. Yeah, this man it's like, is you're... talking to children about a bucket of pornography, yeah. and the kids laugh, and then yeah. he kicks them out. Unreal, yeah. dude. They were like, "You're not taking it seriously." I'm like, "I am. I don't know how to." Do how that. else could I take it, sir? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bucket of porn in the woods. That's incredible. You know what's so funny, dude? Is like the conservative Christian like obsession with sex is like so much more overwhelming than like the secular world's obsession with sex dude i never heard about porn and sex more in my young young life than when i was at youth group in my men's right. group and our youth ministers would all they wanted to talk about dude was like right. masturbation and sex activity i mean and and i did find out that my youth minister was a pedophile so it all lines up but like Alleg allegedly no, fucking not allegedly no he was a pedophile fuck that guy he fucked my friend he's i don't give a fuck fuck him dude dude shamed me shamed me for years of my life about masturbation and then fucked my friend fuck that guy um anyway just for shits and giggles i'm gonna throw out another allegedly I, and i will say no certainly <laughs> Uh, okay. Let him sue me. Like that guy's gonna come fucking sue me. He wants his That's name. That's a in the good paper. point. Give me a break, yeah. dude. That's a good. Come point. on, come on. Um, also, I'm I not like saying you his can, name. I like when you can see everything like being clipped. Like it all stutters. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, dude. And it wasn't just him though. Unless they're all pedophiles. But I feel like all those fucking youth man ministers. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna be like everyone. Everyone stuff. fucked my friend. <laughs> yeah, they all fucked him. <laughs> Although he was a big slut. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I, it's true, though. One, one side effect of that is that like now, and this is, this is just a me thing. This is my own thing. But if I meet somebody who's like chosen to work with like teenagers, like I'm, I'm, I am so suspicious of that person. Like I don't really? trust anyone who like goes into that. Um, anyway. But uh, Zach is just mad he didn't want to fuck him. What a what an incredible joke there, homie. Biggs McDogus. Uh, so it says like Trevor. That's right. I I, I work with kids. Oh shit. <laughs> hey yeah. So there's there's good ones of us out there. Yeah. Not everybody. Although if you were a pedophile, <laughs> if you were a pedophile, and this was your angle of how to get to kids, this would be the worst angle you could pick. Like you're literally monitored by Disney all the time. Mm -hmm. Like it, that would never, right? That would be insane. <clears throat> um, the um, someone says Trevor keeps throwing around that word allegedly. You gotta, you gotta be careful. You know, you don't want people like, uh, like, uh, you know, suing you. We're trying to get a movie made. <laughs> What if we got to like three hundred thousand dollars, and then we get sued by this pedophile allegedly, and then uh, <laughs> then we don't have anyone? If if that was the case, well, he couldn't take from the whitest kids. Oh, he would he would just come after me. I would I would be fine. I would be fine. Um, that's the thing though. It's like everyone has to like dance around the pedophiles. God forbid the sex offenders have their feelings hurt. They might get mad and overreact. Everyone else just has to keep their secrets. Fuck that shit. Um, all right, let's move on. I'm, I'm being annoying. Does Disney know about this Twitch thing? That's a good question. Uh, I think so. I mean, I'm not, I tweet it out and I Instagram it. Yeah. Do you think Disney monitors your, your Twitter account? I don't, I don't. I mean, they they follow it. I don't know. Mm. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, what else happened this week? <clears throat> I don't know what else happened. I have honestly been so unplugged. I feel like kind of in the last two weeks, I have like totally disconnected from the news. You know, I'm not... Uh, I'm not doing the whole political podcast thing anymore. I feel so much better. I'm like, I know that there's like a whole Texas lawsuit where like all these people in Texas are trying to get the election overturned, but I, they're not going to win. So I don't really care. I don't know. What, mm -hmm. What's going on? Um, Buzz Lightyear prequel. Okay. Oh, the, um, yeah. Rudy has COVID. 
Right. Rudy's got COVID, which is, you know, hilarious. Yeah. Did I mean, that already is... have it? Is this the second I time? I don't know. Um, but no, no, I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Oh. So he's got COVID, which, you know, I hope he doesn't die. But Me too. You know, it, I don't want Rudy is... to die. No, I don't want him to die. But it is, it is funny that he has it. You know, yeah. Um, because he's kind of going around, and everybody for months has been like, he doesn't have a mask on. Like, and he's, yeah. he's and every time you see him, he's like sweating. Like he's oh. like one of those old timey lawyers in like those uh, those like legal dramas. Yeah. And he's like mopping his brow, and he's like wiping it, wiping it on his mouth, and then like touching people. And you're like, you're gonna get COVID, and then he gets it. It's funny when that happens. It's COVID's not funny. It's funny when it happens to people who are like flaunting it. Yeah. And you still don't want them to die, but it's kind of maybe funny is not the right word. What no, is no, it? it's I, I I like funny. <laughs> Um, yeah. Did you see that clip of him where he, he like, he blew his hands and then he sit next to a lady and then he just like, he like, he puts his handkerchief on his thigh and he slaps it. And then he just like rubs her arm for no reason. Yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing, yeah. dude? It's amazing. He didn't get it before that. Yep. Um, is he in the hospital? Somebody, I think he went in the hospital. Somebody said he's already, yeah. Oh, also Shia LaBeouf is in trouble. Right, FKA Twigs is suing Shia LaBeouf. I I did read that today. She said that yeah. he uh, she, he he risked her life in a car, right? Okay. Like driving crazy, and then he like got her out of the car and was like shaking her, and it was a whole situation. And uh, I don't. It's one weird thing, and this is I'm not talking about Shia and FKA anymore, but like I do think mm-hmm. it's strange when people in relationships sue each other for emotional abuse during the relationship it's like we're all abusing each other emotionally you know like isn't that a you know you mean everybody i just mean like every relationship every Mm -hmm. romantic long-term relationship has some ugly emotion i I don't know man that well like i this happened with the um chris hardwick thing remember that chris hardwick uh they were like um you know she was like they were emotionally abusive or something like that yeah i mean like like, Look, yeah, I'm not talking know. about physical abuse, and I'm not talking about sexual yeah. abuse. I'm talking about like emotional abuse, and it's like right. That that's all I'm talking about. And and right. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I'm yeah. saying. But can you sue for it? That's the sue that's, for your, it? that's your question. That's interesting. There's definitely emotional abuse. I'm not discrediting that it can happen, but it's like, yeah. who's to say what it is, and does it belong in our court system? Yeah, I don't the, know. Uh, the Shia LaBeouf thing's interesting because he's not like. Um, this is bullshit. I didn't do this or anything like that. He's like, yeah, he's like, I'm a fucking alcoholic. Yeah. You know, this is well documented. Uh, I kind of fucking hate myself. Um, Trevor's about to get canceled. What for? No, ignore it. Yeah. Shy was like, I was talking about hard along the lines of like, I abuse everybody. (laughs) He's like, I've abused everyone in my path. Which, which is not like, you know, it's not an excuse, but you know, there is something where you're like, Okay, well then, what does you I mean? Yeah, he's an al- He's a, he's got a fucking problem. He's got a. He obviously has a huge problem. What is he? Uh, what does he do? What do you do? Like, go to jail? I don't know. I don't. I yeah. mean, if he committed a crime, then sure. But yeah. But uh, who knows? Um, hey, I see Hellcat Curl on here. Hey, Hellcat Curl. Thank you. Um, you know why? Uh, <clears throat> what else happened this week? Okay, why is uh, everyone talking about Zodiac? Did something happen? Oh, they solved the Zodiac cipher. Who was it? I don't know. What did it say? I don't. You want to pull it up? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me, I'll be right back. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab something real quick. Okay. Do your thing. Zach, hold your breath at a urinal. It works for real. Interesting. Well, you know what I find if I if I'm at a urinal and I can't go and I, something's gonna happen, I'll like touch the back of my hand to like a cold tile, not in the urinal, but like to something. And for some reason, like, the cold sensation on my skin will, like, maybe do the trick. It's fucking annoying. My brain is broken. Oh, it was nothing important. It was just him bragging and stuff. That sucks. All right, so what happened to Zodiac Killer? I I guess he was just bragging. He didn't, like, reveal his identity. Oh, but he, like, sent another thing out? I think it was, like, an old one that they couldn't crack, and and somehow they finally did. Did you see Zodiac, the movie? Did you like it? I did. I don't remember anything about it. I liked it. Oh, did you watch Mink? I did. What'd you think? 
I thought it was super fucking boring. Me too. And and I love old Hollywood. I love um, that genre. I love that time frame. I love <clears throat> Gary Oldman and David Fincher. Yeah, I I'm, I'm in. I'm I'm as much of an audience as you can have for that. Like I love old movies, and I thought it was real fucking boring. It was whole... so dull, dude. It was yeah. a slog. It also didn't look good. Which was weird, like, because David Fincher is great at black and white. Like, you know, his old music videos were, you know, he, mm -hmm. he did great work with Madonna and black and white stuff like that. But this all just looked like the mid-tones. This is very interesting conversation, but uh, <laughs> the mid-tones, it was just mostly gray and there wasn't a lot of contrast in it. It just kind of looked muddy. It looked a mess. It was very obvious that it was shot digitally and then they just took the color out of it. Yeah. Like, it, it, and, it was, and I hated that the fire was so phony CGI. Like I, I thought that was distracting. Yeah. It, was like, it looked oh. cheap. It, and, and, and I know it wasn't, but it was like, you know, I, it just didn't look good. I it also like, hated the audio manipulation. How it was like, the, the audio was like changed so it would sound like those old Citizen Kane era like talkies. And it's just like, yeah. it made it difficult to understand what the fuck people were saying. I was not into it, man. It's too bad. Yeah. I was so excited. Wasn't good. You know what I saw that was great this week? Hmm. The Mandalorian. Oh my God. Here we go again. <laughs> All right. This has like become a feature of every, so every Newsboys episode Trevor has to talk about. How good this week's episode of The Mandalorian. Uh, Billy Burr. He killed it. Bill Burr's in it? Oh, he's, he did like an Emmy level performance. Get out of like, here. Like, really? I'm, I'm not, I'm not joking. Like, wow. it's so good. Like, Bill Burr is awesome in it. Billy um, Burr. Who would have yeah. thought? Who would have thought he had it in him? <laughs> Billy yeah. Red Tits. That's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. All right. I've been saying I need to get into it. It's really good. Is Disney paying Trevor for this week? No, no, they're not. I just, um, I'm just uh, kind of a dork about Star Wars. Trevor, but, but if you could really. only have one streaming service for the next three years, which one would it be? Netflix. Netflix? Yeah, because the, they, they do documentaries better than anyone else. I mean, the, the documentaries, like, they've got, they have such a good turnover for documentaries that there's always new stuff, um, where I feel like the documentaries on the other ones are lacking. Mm -hmm. um, what was the last good uh, Netflix doc? I, I think I would go HBO Max. Really? Yep. Well, they're which getting all could, the Warner Brothers You can see Rekton cool. right now. What? You can see Rekton on HBO Rekt Max is right on now. there, and that's not why, but but I just like HBO's... I like the HBO shows. I could... I know at the very least, I could just go back and watch old HBO shows and be fucking totally happy. Right. I can rewatch The Sopranos every two years and be stoked. Yeah, I, I, I like... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, uh, yeah, the, I, I like I like the Star Wars stuff on Disney. Um, my kid loves the Disney one, mm -hmm. you know, because that's got all the stuff for him. So I don't know. Like, but if it's just me, I think I think Netflix. And I don't like Netflix a lot of their programming, but their documentaries they kill it. Yeah, you know. Wait, they're, what, they're... what were some good Netflix docs? I don't even know. Um, well, the um, making it murder. Of... Yeah, it was great. The um, Keepers was good. Oh, hold on. I got I got to go. Can I come right do back? Do thing, do thing. 2 minutes. All right. The keeper. Right. Oh yeah, the HBO has the Heaven's Gate doc. I haven't watched that yet, but I want to. Um What were the other fucking good docs? Have you guys seen Oh, what the fuck? It's about a monster. It's like a it's a it's It's about a cult leader who was like a gay porn star who became a cult leader and in the doc they like confront him it's fucking good dude what, what am i trying to think of don't fuck with cats which i'm in by the way uh highly recommend watching don't fuck with cats it's not called real monster tiger king was the shit tiger king was good paradise lost is awesome the jinx is awesome what the fuck is the name of the one i'm thinking of guys ah brutal Zach, look up. He will not divide us. Uh, the internet historian on YouTube. It's about Shia LaBeouf fighting the internet. No, I'm not going to look that up right now. Don't fuck with cats. I don't really think don't fuck with cats is great, but there's a weird moment where I'm, I'm in don't fuck with cats because the killer would Photoshop himself into various photographs of other people and he picked Darren's wedding photo, dude. So it's like he put himself on Darren's head 
with Darren's wife next to him and me as a I was in I was a groomsman like kneeling smiling into the camera front and center it's so fucking weird so if you haven't seen don't fuck with cats you want to see like I think Sam is in it maybe Timmy's in the photo I'm not sure but like yeah dude I, I it's still every every few days some rando from my life will text me and be like dude did you know that you're in don't fuck with cats I'm like yeah it's super weird man um, do you know why he picked it? I have no idea. But the whitest kids does have the cat hunting sketch, and this guy kills cats. Like maybe he was a fan of our hunting sketch. I have no fucking idea. Um, Zach, I just finished watching. Oh, thank you, wrecked. Yes, uh, you loved it, but you couldn't help but notice that my eyes are really close together. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Zach, I beat Rage 2. The ending sucked. Hey, it's about the destination, not the, not, or the journey, not the destination. Who, you know, Rage 2 rules. Zach, do you ever get stuck in the dryer? Never in my life. Never in my life. Does living in SoCal suck? Um, I'm going to say no. I don't think it does. Uh, 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 uh. Zach Kreger, Star Don't Fuck With Cats. That's me. Zach, how's the PS5 been? It's been fantastic. It's been a goddamn dream. Trevor, I was just talking about how we're in Don't don't Fuck With Cats. Are you in oh, it? Yeah. Is it? Whose face is I know I'm... I'm cut off right here. Um, Sam and I are cut off at our heads. So it's me and Timmy are the ones that you can really see. Yeah. Oh, Bill. It's me and Bill. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was crazy when that happened. Yeah, that was nuts, man. Because it was like everyone started texting us that weekend. Yeah, I still get texts. <clears throat> yeah, people are like, you guys are in, you know. Yeah. Um, and also, like, we knew that dude who was killing all the cats for well, years. Shit, shit. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Thought he was a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> also, we knew that dude who was killing all those cats. Yeah. We thought he was eccentric. He, I thought he was hilarious. Yeah. Um, the, uh, <laughs> what else happened this week? There was a, um, oh, I just saw that the COVID vaccine has been approved. For America? Yep, like literally in the last couple, uh, like in the last hour. No, oh, it, all right. Approved. So when yeah. when is that gonna be rolled out? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess they would do it immediately. Um, but it's like, it's gonna, they're gonna give it to all old people first. Mm -hmm. And they're says, gonna give it to essential workers. Yeah, which is, that's, that's what they should do. That's <laughs> I know, good, I know. yeah. Captain Cracker says, you guys sold out by not using YouTube Live. Twitch has too much censorship for what Whitey's Kids used to be. Uh, well, we're doing Twitch because we need to raise money for the movie. That's the whole point, my friend. And Twitch has a way better monetization model than YouTube Live. So Yeah, I mean, if you want to like get down to it, I mean, I guess in a way we are selling out because we're trying to raise money for a movie. So I guess that's selling out. I don't know. Like, yeah, you know I, what? I, no, it's not selling out because I can say this with confidence. Literally zero dollars are, are going into our pockets for this. Like we, the money we've taken out has been for equipment. It's bought me a yeah. monitor and Sam a, Sam a computer. And that's it. So also, that's there's not two ways, out, dude. Also, there's two ways to make the movie. One is you go through the regular avenues, and you know, and and we could probably get it, you know, someone to put up the money because it's not in in the in the large scale of movie stuff. It's not a huge budget. So, um, uh, but the movie that's going to come out of that is going to be such more of a sellout movie than the movie that we make if yeah. we have to answer to nobody. Yeah. So that's why, I mean, like the, the script, the way we have it, I don't think we could do it uh, unless we do it ourselves. Yeah. So selling out is watering down your content mm -hmm. to get it made or to get more money. We're not watering anything down. This is going to be like the most punk yeah. rock thing we've ever done. Yeah. And also like the difference between this and YouTube, like, I mean, um, honestly, if you want to, we, uh, by doing the streams on Twitch, we make so much more money towards the movie than we do like with YouTube. So yeah. that's, and, and they're all, they're all the same kind of, I mean, I guess Twitch is known as being a little more like conservative and stuff, but like so far we're fine. Nobody's. Yeah. Rufflopian tubes. Thank you, my friend. Jesus Christ, dude. Just gifted 20 subs. Thanks buddy. Oh. Appreciate it. 
Um. Anyway, yeah, dude. What, what Trevor said. Yeah, also, yeah, somebody made a good point. Yeah, we sold out with Miss March, moron. <laughs> we did. That was selling out. The movie sucked. Yeah. I fucking <laughs> learned my lesson. Yeah. We're not doing that again. Yeah, we know we sold out. Yeah. We sold out as young men. Now we're now we're middle-aged men that have to deal with the consequences. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Why is someone saying stop clipping, assholes? I, who cares? Is it bad that people would clip? I don't give a shit. May McDonough, thank you for gifting. Ten. Appreciate it. Um what else? Somebody says, how many nude scenes does Timmy have in the movie? Timmy, well, it's animated, so okay. But Timmy does have some nude scenes in the movie, doesn't he? He does. And big sex scene. He does. He does. Actually, he multiple. Does. Timmy, he's got, he's got more than one. If you think about yeah, the very last scene. he does have a bunch scene. of nude scenes. Yeah. There's a, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, there's a lot of n- nudity. Um, the... Uh, <clears throat> Someone said I watched Miss March last night. There are some good jokes in it. There are. There are. There are some yeah. good jokes in that movie. Yeah, I like. I like. There's th- things I like about Miss March. I just don't think it's uh, successful um, as a consistent film. Right. You know. For sure. Which w- w- which I do think Civil War is, um, and I and I do think this this new one is. Please talk about the Galactic Federation. I don't know what it means. Oh, did you hear about this? No. So, um, uh, I think it's the guy who was in charge of like, basically like the, the guy who was the CIA for Israel for like 30 years, like the head of the CIA for Israel. Mossad, I don't know if it's Mossad, but it was something. It was something um, like a, 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 a big guy in intelligence in, uh, uh, for Israel, 30 years, comes out, he has a book coming out this week where he's like, there are aliens. Uh, the United States and Israel have, ma- have been meeting with them for decades. And there is a galactic federation. What the uh, fuck are you talking about, dude? Do you believe this? Do you think this is true? No, I'm just telling you, I'm, t- I'm telling you what the news story is, though. All right. He's the, yeah. He was the head of Mossad? I mean, that's crazy, dude. It's not Mossad, but it's something like that. It's like, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, is, am I right? Does anybody, is anybody in here that like knows this thing? Like, uh, <laughs> Trevor took long for that. No. Yeah, he says they live in an underground thing on Mars. Yeah, it's, it is Mossad. It is Mossad. Oh, he was in the defense. He was the defense secretary. The defense secretary for Israel. Anyway, he's saying that like, oh yeah, no, we've been talking with aliens forever and you know, they don't want us to know because they'll blow our minds. And I was like pissed off and I was tweeting about it where I was like, it's not gonna blow our minds. Like we don't care. Like, you know, they they declassified UFOs this year. No one gave a shit. Like, you know, we, we, we get that they're aliens. Yes, they're aliens. It would be impossible for there not to be aliens. Like, Do you, you know. think, though, that those UFOs, like that the, the, the footage of those fighter pilots, right? That's what you're talking about, that the New York Times released like four years ago where you can like watch the video and those dudes are like, look at that, dude. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, the Blink-182 guy got that released. I told you I went to uh, lunch with him. Right. At, where he was talking about all that shit. Yeah, like... Uh, do you think but, that's actually aliens, or do you think it's just, like, a, a man-made craft that, like, those dudes didn't know about? No, I think it's aliens. You really do? Yeah, I think it is. I, 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 because it wasn't, it wasn't just that. That was the best video evidence of it that was, like, recorded through, like, an officially government, like, you know, kind of but thing. But why did but, that... I get that it was a real footage, but that doesn't mean it's not man-made. Well, suppose at, at the speed that those were going and and how they were changing directions, you know, without like the slowing, like you know, they were they were defying like anything close to what we've been able to do. Like maybe it was. I mean, there there's there's always that saying where they're like, you know, we're the government is is 40, 50, uh maybe 80 years ahead technology-wise of what is public, you know? Um but that I don't know if I believe that either. I but I just think that like there's obviously aliens, you know. Of, of like course, you, in the universe, yes. Mathematically, there has to be, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, we from what we can monitor, 
you know, and also if, if there are aliens, you have, if, if you take the universe into, into like consideration, there has to be uh, a lot of aliens that are, you know, just like a planet full of dogs and bullshit. Like, there you know, where they didn't, yeah, they didn't get far, you know, they're like that. But there's got to be a ton of things that are like billions of years more advanced than us. And like, if you think about how much that we ha uh, have advanced techno uh, technology wise in the last hundred years, you string that out into billions. Like, my God, like, you know, it, 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 it's insane what I, mean, I don't even think we would be able to identify alien life if it was right in front of us. Like, right. You know. I mean, I always think about it. It's like when I when I'm walking past an ant hill and there's ants, you know, doing their thing. I never have the thought like I got to make contact with these ants. You know, it's like they don't, no. aliens don't give a fuck about us. They don't know? give it. I mean, we probably can't even see them if they were right in front of us. Like, sure. you know, um, like it, it. So, you know, of course, there's these things. Why wouldn't they monitor everything going on in the universe, especially when a uh, planet gets to the point of uh, like breaking a, a, the atom, you know, you know, like if we if we can if we can detect with our small minds, if we can detect whether or not a planet, you know, uh, 200 million light years away has water vapors coming off of it, they sure as shit can tell, you know, oh, somebody just fucking made a nuke, you know, let's but I go mean, check. How, how big of a deal is even a nuke, though? Well, I think I think it would be a touchstone um, um, in evolution. Mm -hmm. Like you'd be like, oh, that's a huge achievement, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Like, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Are they going to kill themselves or are they going to be able to keep it together long enough for them to get off this planet? What do you think is a bigger achievement for, for an organism? Nuke or uploading your consciousness into a machine and living forever? Um, I mean, they're both big. Uh, I, like I would uploading say the, your consciousness. I would like, say the latter. Yeah, yeah, that one, you know. Um, but here's you know. what I always think. Uploading your consciousness is, you're, let's say you do it, right? It's not really your, your consciousness. It's just a machine. Now it's your, your mind is replicated in a machine. Right. But you're dead. Yeah. It's kind of like Swamp Thing. You know, Swamp Thing was such an interesting character because, like, he was a man. He was a doctor who, who got his brain... He died in this swamp and this plant was able to like replicate itself exactly as him. So this plant mm -hmm. thinks it's him, but he's dead. It's not. It's just this replica. It's like a facsimile that just believes right. it's this guy. It's interesting. Um, yeah. Like there's, yeah. I mean, I, I think people who are like, oh, if we, if we hit this level of advancement, we'll be able to live forever. Like, I don't think that's on the table. Um, I think it's more, you got to think of it more like a, a, a crystallis or a, uh, you know, like one of the, like a, like the, the caterpillar goes and makes the fucking cocoon mm -hmm. and then he gets dissolved, you know, basically. And then like a butterfly comes out kind of, like, right. like but the caterpillar is dead. I believe. Is that right? No, the butterfly is the caterpillar. I don't think so. I think the caterpillar dies. I could be wrong. That's, um, if that is true, that is fucking trippy as hell, dude. Yeah, no, it, it dissolves and then the what's left of it makes the, you know, the butterfly. And I think that's what like uh, when we're talking about uploading ourselves into these machines, it's not that we will experience living on. We're not we're, we'll never be able to do that. Our bodies are not made for space travel. It's uh, we can't deal with radiation. We also have short lifespans. We'll never be able to like, you know, make the, the tra uh, we won't be able to travel a distance to a new a new home or anything. But the things that we create could, you know, so we're basically a step in evolution. Mm -hmm. The things after us might be able to go and explore the cosmos. Have you ever heard of the philosophical debate of, of Theseus's ship? Mm -mm. So there's just like, just like a brain teaser. It's just like Theseus had this, this ship, right? This giant wooden ship. Say it's made of a million pieces of wood and nail. And it's like, Let's say you had another identical ship next to it, right? Mm -hmm. So this one is Theseus's ship, and that one is just ship X. And let's mm -hmm. say you you swap one board from from these two ships. Which one is Theseus's ship? That one is. So let's say you swap another board, and then another, and at a certain point you get half of these boards are now in this one. Like, is that Theseus's ship? Are they both Theseus's ship? And as you keep doing the transfer, like. Does that when does that become Theseus's ship? You know, it's just mm -hmm. an interesting sort of a thing. So it's like if you were to 
if you were to slowly like replicate your mind, I mean, our bodies, our cells die every seven years. We were a completely new body. You know what I mean? That just remembers, that thinks it's the old body. Like right. if, if you were to meet yourself from 10 years ago, you wouldn't share a single atom with yourself. Right. right? So are, are you really still Trevor? Or are you just like a, a whole new collection of things that thinks it's Trevor? Like it's always but then, happening but, to us. But then what is, uh, what, what is, what is Trevor? What is Zach? Right. I don't uh, know. Like it's, it's, uh, and then you get into the thing of like, is there a soul? Is there something that, it, that is beyond the material world that you kind of become like, you know, you, you get, you know, muddled here mm -hmm. in like, you know, kind of a physical plane for a little bit, but even that, you know, th that still isn't connect. I mean, like the, the, that idea still is connecting your soul or your essence to memory, which we know isn't true. Right. You know, because right. we memory's don't have, we don't, wrong all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have, we don't, we don't have memories of, of, of whoever we might've been before this. Um, you know, yeah. Like, you know, you, people who have Alzheimer's or dementia, they don't not have a soul if there is a soul. It's not like your soul deteriorating at that point, or right. maybe it is. I mean, it doesn't make sense that it would be, but it's like, so memory, I don't think memory is that important. Sure. I mean, the Buddhists are all about living in the moment. You know, the past is irrelevant. Like memory is useless. Like, yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, is this incredibly boring? I don't think so. Oh, God. Yeah. Somebody says, Zach, what's that book you were talking about, about the, the people uploaded into the thing it was called the metamorphosis of prime intellect that was the name of it did i tell did i uh st t give you that book no did I, did I tell you to read that no have you read that book i love it I, I did i tell you to read it no i've been dude i have been preaching about that book for a decade no i i found it way way back early internet go on like alt use the, uh, and i actually uh, me too I, dude I, I found it on the internet like a decade ago and i i devoured it I tried to get the rights to it. How have we never talked about this? I consider I, I, getting the rights to that book. It's blow my, It blows my mind that you know what this is. Dude, I've like, read that book twice. I bought it multiple times because I give it to so many people. No, never talked get about it. Get the fuck like, out of here. I tried, to, I tried to get the rights to it like years ago. Like, what you know, happened? It was just I couldn't find the person like kind of thing. Like, well, I, he's I, this I, Australian I, dude, and that's the mm -hmm. only novel. It was a vanity publishing. So Trevor and I are talking about this book. Which, by the way, is one of the most disturbing, fucked up books you'll ever read. Like, if you've read American Psycho, this is worse than American Psycho. What, but what I wanted to do was turn it into an inc incredibly dark comedy. Sure. Yeah. Dude, I can't believe... Well, now we should do it together, dude. All right, let's try it. That'd we be fun. We should try it. Because yeah. I've been, I, I have been so obsessed with this book. I have it on my fucking shelf right now. It, that's just so great. I mean, this is like, uh, like, and what, nobody knows about this book. There were like no, 500 not, pressed. I got like Amy into it. Like, you know, I made like, Sarah it, it, read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. This book is called the metamorphosis of prime intellect. It was written like 15 years ago by this Australian dude, vanity publishing. He like self published it. I downloaded it a digital copy first and then I ordered it on Amazon, which I think you can still do. It is about, uh, singularity happens and the computer is called prime intellect is the intelligence that's like born mm -hmm. out of the singularity and it happens in an instant where it becomes like godlike it comes it becomes omniscient and omnipotent and it follows Asimov's directives where it is like it's like uh, you know do no harm to humans allow no harm to come to humans and the third one I can't remember what the third uh, the third principle is but um but what it does is it instantly like puts uploads everyone's consciousness into this cloud essentially where like now human beings are immortal and you live in this like white void and anything that you want is like instantly available to you. You could be like, I want Moby Dick in my hand. It will appear in your hand. You could be like, I want to be uh, a, a constant orgasming cycle and you will become this constant orgasming cycle. Um, and so because people can have anything they want whenever they want, they're, they're miserable and they want to die. And it's about like, how do you get out of this, this hell that is like instant gratification? It's so fascinating. And the whole story, the protagonist is someone who's come the closest to dying ever. Yeah. And, 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 and people like basically do almost like sports tournaments to see how close to dying they can get because that becomes like, that's what's like fetishized. Like, yeah. You know, kind of. It's a great book. Um, but yeah, it is awesome. very violent. And there's also yeah. very graphic 
scene of incest, which is like a little a little yeah. strange. But, uh, but it really is, blows my mind that you know this book. Oh, dude, love yeah. that book. I can't believe we haven't talked about this. Yeah. Wild. Um, have you read much of Vonnegut? Uh, Slaughterhouse Five. That's you should read it. Cat's Cradle. Yeah. It's tremendous. Yeah. I don't like cats. Yeah. All right. We'll skip it then. Yeah. Um, um, so it says Book Boys. Book Boys, baby. Yeah. Yo, uh, the, what was should... the last book you last? I guess you don't read much novels anymore. No, I always read not nonfiction. Right. And not even like just before anyone's like, oh, like not good nonfiction. Like I read about like, um, you know, I, I, I uh, what's that fucking dude? Uh, like Trump's lawyer. I bought his oh, book. Oh, Michael Cohen's right? book. I couldn't yeah. put that down. I just read all that like tabloid fucking, you know, news kind of thing. Like I, I love that stuff. Yeah. I'm going to run an ad real quick. We're supposed to be running ads. I'm going to run a 30 second multiplayer ad. I don't know what the fuck this multiplayer ad means, but. Oh, Whatever. Taylor Swift had a new. Uh... Uh, let me do some thank yous real quick also. All right. Hang on while I'm running it. Uh, Katata Fish, thank you, my friend. Donated. Ken Lango donated. He says, will you be my friend so I can tell your personal stories prefaced with my friend? Yes. Uh, Cade Welly donated. He says, do you guys have a serial killer that you find the most interesting? Also, have you heard the new info on the Zodiac Killer? For me, it would probably be BTK. Um... Do you have a favorite serial killer? No, I don't like serial killers. All right. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't like that. I don't have that. Uh, my wife is really into them, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. It bums me out. I don't. I don't. I don't enjoy it. Like, right. um, I'm fascinated with uh, Charles Manson a little sure. bit because um, I think it's. But what, what I think is fascinating about him is that he never killed anybody. I think That's he killed one different. person. Did he? I think he like beat a man to death on the ranch before all the murders happened, and and there, no one's really sure if he did or not. But. Yeah, like that, that to me, that's interesting that it's a guy who is in jail for life and dead now, but like for right, just died, yeah. for just uh, kind of being a bad influence. Like it, 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 it's crazy. I like I, I don't like Sam Kinison. I find him to be insufferable, but uh, he did have one great joke where he's like talking about the Manson murders. He's like, he's like, way to go, guys. Way to handle your high. And it's like, if you just boil it down, that's exactly what it was. Just a bunch of people who couldn't handle their high. It fucking ruined it for everybody. <laughs> Idiots. Although I'm glad there's no more hippies. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, he did kill the hippies. So. That needed to end. Yeah. Any <laughs> Hayes donated $50. He says, if you didn't sell out, I couldn't buy in. So thanks for that, you absolute posers. All right. Thank you. MLM Pupper donated, says, Hey, Zach, for the movie, will the drawings of Timmy's butthole be used for his nude scenes? Also, when will they go on auction? Love you. It's a good question. We should auction them. Um, how should we auction them? Yeah, I don't know how to, how to do that. Uh, I can put them on eBay, I guess. I, somebody tell oh, me. Oh, that's how to what we should do. Yeah, them. eBay. That's how you do it. That's how you auction things. Can't wait for Mars. Just started watching Wrecked, and it's fantastic. Thank you. And then DJ Carson. Oh, that was RJ Bronoff. Thank you. And then DJ Carson donated fifty bucks. Dude, why is everyone donating fifty bucks tonight? You guys. That's are really awesome. nice. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I love it. Um, Andy McDonough. Thank you so much for all the gifted Rufflopian tubes. You're still going off. Typical hunk is gifting. Thank you, guys. Fucking awesome. Oh, here's an update. So where we are in the contract, because we're figuring out the contract thing. This contract is taking forever. Contract's taking forever because there's all these rules that, like, you know, unions, and, you know, unions are great. Yeah. God bless unions. Uh, not anti-union uh, here. But there's all these rules that we have to pay ourselves to perform in the movie. But don't worry, because... Any money that we pay ourselves is going, we will turn around and donate it right back into the movie. That's what we're trying to figure out, how we can not get paid for it, or basically technically get paid and then donate the money back to yeah. the project. Because this isn't, I mean, unions are great because it's like, if you get these studio, these studio people, you know, they would just, you know, if there weren't unions, actors would be making like, you know, no cents because everyone because, wants like, to work they'd work for free and everyone knows that so they'll take advantage of them yeah it's what happened when um uh uh uh, uh reagan ronald reagan uh reagan but sure R ronald reagan what did i say you said reagan 
Reagan. That's not it? Ronald Reagan? Oh my God. You don't know how to pronounce Ronald Reagan? Are you kidding? It's like, it's like Ray gun, like a space no, gun. No, it's not like Ray gun. It's like Reagan. Yeah. Anyway, Ronald Reagan. Like, like he, Ray gun. Like he, uh, you know, it was like, oh, you can't, uh, no more unions for the, the pilots. Pilots of like all the airlines. He, uh, because the pilots, uh, I think their union was getting kind of like, they were like, we're going to shut everything down. He's like, well, you can't shut everything down because we need airplanes to make everything work. Like the country doesn't work without airplanes. So he's like, you can't be unionized anymore. And at the time, he probably thought that was a good thing to do. But what ended up happening is like these pilot guys that are like flying you everywhere, they're making like $30,000 yeah, a year or like $35,000 because it's like they love flying. So like, you know, you can, the, the airlines know this. They can just be like, yeah, it, well, you can get your own plane and fly. No, they can't. Yeah. You know, they need someone else's plane. So they have them over a fucking barrel. Yeah. It's brutal. But anyway, fear not. If, if the unions make us pay ourselves, I, I'm telling you now, any money that we pay ourselves is going straight back into the movie. We yeah, that's what we're trying to right that's back what we're, in. That's what we're trying to figure out. Right yeah. Now, how, to, how to do that before we like. But we are not we, taking paychecks. That's for no. sure uh j dog 1822 thank you for for cheering that's a lot of cheering holy shit dude ron gina what's up my friend thank you for gifting holy moly uh you know, what else I, is going because on? if we if we took money for the movie then the movie wouldn't be art wouldn't be art yeah have you ever heard that uh oh. thing somebody says um for something to truly be art it has to be done anonymously so there's no, um, no, there's no, uh, there's no, um, you know, you're not doing it for gratif for like social gratification. Uh, you can't get paid for it. And um, it just has to be from just pure love, like an anonymous kind of thing. And so the, uh, the argument is that bathroom stall graffiti is the purest form of art. Uh, terrible. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess I guess the Sistine Chapel was not art. The Mona Lisa is not art, right? They were hacks. A any novel published is not art. Ridiculous. Uh, somebody says I've seen Zucchini Boys. Maybe Timmy should get paid. <laughs> Someone says take a lap. I think that's at me. <laughs> um, give Sam money to pay for a housekeeper. Dude, I was, it's funny. I was going back and I was watching like one of our very, very early Buckers and Myers. I was just like checking mm -hmm. it out. Sam's room, like way back in the day, it looks insane. Yeah, Twitch has been great because it's made Sam clean up his room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Make sure um, Sam doesn't buy any dumb shit with our donations. He he can't. He he couldn't. All, all of this is wired into an account that is a whitest kids account that our business manager presides over. No one, no none of us are able to withdraw from the account. So without like everyone else like signing off kind of thing. Right. Although, and, and I should say the goal of this because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be uh, telling lies. The goal of this is to actually, um, we're not going to take money until we get the movie made. But the goal is that we can make money with the movie. Because what we want is to establish a fund, you know, like hopefully the movie does well. And that way we have this fund of money that we can make more movies and right. never have to use the system again. Let's that, say that this movie somehow generates us a million dollars. That's that's the budget of the next movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, don't, yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone's grilling us. I don't know why I'm sounding defensive right now. So don't get it twisted. Everyone's like, yeah, dude, it's cool. Because we have all these movie ideas, <laughs> but uh, whenever we tell them to people, they're like, y uh, don't do it that way. And we're like, no, but what if we did? And that's what we're going to yeah. do for the rest of our lives if this works. Fight barn. Fight Barn will be real. Fight Barn is never going to get made. In fact, I really do think we should read Fight Barn like on, on stream. I think that would be a really fun special stream is we, we like read Fight Barn. You know what I would love to make is the original version of The End of the World. 
the first one before the studio fucked it up the one that we sent it to paramount and they were like this is unfilmable do that's you, what i was do you like have that script i was looking for it i could only find the paramount script i've never thrown a computer away i have every computer i've ever had so like it's on there somewhere yeah um yeah so we had i'm sure some people know so like long long time ago the year that we got our first season at fuse we got that because we did this comedy festival in aspen the hbo comedy festival it used to be a big deal and um doesn't exist anymore but um we got out of that we got our our show on the air and then we also got a movie deal at paramount which we were very excited mm-hmm. about so we wrote this script called the end of the world where we were five man basketball team and uh, we're 25 we're 25 we're yeah we're, that, we're children that's important detail mm-hmm. like i don't know if we'd ever read a script right <laughs> And we wrote this movie. We're a five-man basketball team over the course of the final day on Earth. Like, what would happen if one day all the Bibles and all the Korans and all the religious scriptures from everything were like, the world changed magically overnight and said the world will end tonight at midnight. It's kind of a ridiculous premise, but it doesn't matter. The premise is irrelevant. It's about the whole world's gone crazy because everyone knows at midnight the world will end. Nobody knows how, but it's just like society breaks down. People are freaking out. And this movie follows this basketball team uh, as they wander through us. the apocalypse, which is us. But, and our, our idea is like, oh, so here's the, the elevator pitch. Yeah, is basically everyone knows the world's ending at midnight that night. So it's chaos, fucking in the streets. People are like murdering everybody. And a uh, pickup basketball team decides that the Illuminati probably know how to survive this. Mm -hmm. So they have 24 hours to find the Illuminati and switch places with them. Right. That's the elevator pitch. That's the premise of it. And it is crazy. (laughs) And it it ends up... Somebody says this is the end, which is so we, oh, we yeah. wrote this movie. We wrote this movie like three or four years before this is the end came out. We wrote it and in then, 2005 or six. Yeah, I think five. So then this is the end comes out and we had this manager who is Vince, now Vince Serencion. Yeah, you could say it. He's now uh, he got me too. He's canceled. Uh, he, he, he was a, a bad guy. He got hard allegedly. canceled. Yeah, uh, but he was our manager, and he was a he was a weird guy because I remember like we were just starting to make money. He was like, he's like, you know how you make your money? And I was like, what? He's like, ATMs. He's like, I got ATMs all over this city. He's like, you buy an ATM, it's just money constantly coming in. I was like, I don't want to be an ATM guy. I don't want to be an ATM <laughs> landlord, man. I want to do comedy, like kind of thing. But he was like, nah, fuck that ATM. He's got like, a giant know. key ring. He's always scrambling all over town to like restock his ATM. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so then like, so then, you know, uh, the Seth Rogen thing comes out, the trailer for it comes out and he calls us. He's like, they fucking stole it. Those motherfuckers. They fucking stole it. And I remember like, we were like, I, it's probably, I mean, it's the end of the world. They probably, just, it, people can have that idea. It's not like, yeah. they stole it. he's like, those motherfuckers. Like it was, <laughs> it was amazing. Dude, a funny story about him. So I went to Vince's office. And I was like waiting to sit with him and I'm like out in the lobby and he comes out of his office and he introduces me to this young woman. He's like, Zach, Zach, this is Strawberrius. Strawberrius, this is Zach. And I was like, nice to meet you, Strawberrius. And I like went into his office, Strawberrius leaves and I sit down on his couch and I'm like, Strawberrius? Are you kidding me? That's her name? And he goes, yeah, interesting. That's the second Strawberrius I've met this week. How are you? What's going on? I was like, okay, man. Yeah. It's fucking insane. He did not, he it insane. didn't phase him that that was a weird name. It was just that that was the second one. He was like a little Danny DeVito kind of guy. Yeah. Like he was a tiny guy who just like yelled at everybody, you know, because <laughs> he was like a real Hollywood character, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Strawberries. There's a whole New York Times article about him. Yeah. He, he's so he managed he repped Halle Berry that was like his big client yeah um and I think he treated her well but he treated all of the Halle Berry wannabes that he also managed very badly how really do you bad. how many ATMs do you think Halle Berry owns <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't own a goddamn one <laughs> she's like 
She's like, I don't know. This is actually where my fortune comes from. Vince is right. He was the greatest manager ever. Yeah. He's like, Catwoman uh, didn't pay dick. ATMs. Yeah, cut all these ATMs. <laughs> ATMs <here>. bought this <laughs> house. Oh, uh, God. Somebody says, I'm picturing Tony Shalhoub's character in Barton Fink. He's taken an interest. No, uh, you no, know, Trevor's right. Think of Danny DeVito with hair and a. But like with gray, wavy hair, yeah. like that kind of. He looked like somebody you would see in a scorsese movie and you'd be like that's a little too much like (laughs) yeah yeah they'd be like tone it down this guy's too on the nose vanilla rice vanilla rice i say that right yeah thanks for gifting reflopian tubes you did it again thank you my friend you guys i appreciate you i really do hood be down thanks hood be down he says zach way back wow zach way back it was three months ago sam's room was dirty yeah it was a while ago yeah, we haven't been doing it that long. That's the crazy thing. Like, I was thinking about that this week. Like, how not long we've been doing this. What do you mean? Um, like oh, the Twitch. Twitch. I thought you were talking about Yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But I was like, I mean, okay, so COVID happened in, in March. Mm-hmm. And then I think I started uploading these. Uh, May? Uh, May, yeah, like these little quarantine things like that and then we started i feel like we started in july yeah so it's not even been half a year which is crazy september october november december so six months have we been no way but but then we didn't we didn't do we didn't do twitch until like three months ago like so it was like but it's weird because i like i don't like uh it's hard to be like to think of like not doing this now yeah 55K in three months, Ron Jonas says. That is very good. That is more than I thought we we're going to do. Although I have noticed our earnings have, have steadily declined over the three months. Well, yeah. But also, like, uh, I think we've all gotten a little busy. Like, we're not, I think when our channel was in its stride, like, I was streaming were, every day. Yeah, you were streaming every day. I was like uploading. I was trying to get stuff up on the YouTube like two or three times a week. I think that's key is keeping Mm -hmm. the YouTube healthy is probably going to drive track. We need to get better about that. Sam needs to be uploading those sketch commentaries more often. Yeah. Anyway. Um, We'll get there. We'll get there. But now that we've got this thing that we can do like maybe once a month, which is be on the front page. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that'll help a lot. That'll be good. Yeah. And then also uh, Civil War. We're going to have that come out. That'll be good. That'll help. Um, we should do a Reddit AMA. I know people don't like Reddit, but like it, it helps get eyes on things. Somebody says, what are your thoughts on people getting canceled for just laughing at off-color humor? Does that happen? Horrible. Horrible. Don't that, like it. That, that I never happen. thought... I never thought Billy Bush, I thought Billy Bush got a raw deal. Remember when Trump was like, sure. You know, he's like, I, I grabbed him by the pussy or whatever. And like Billy Bush is like, <laughs> you know, like, and he fucking lost his show. I mean, I know I'm not the first person to say this. This is like, but it's like, what is he? I mean, like, what is he supposed to do? Like grab and be like, no. And call a cop right then. I, like, you know, like he's, I know you got to Donald Trump is the guest on this show. Billy Bush doesn't own the show. He can't like chastise the guest. Yeah. He's going to get fucking fired. He's a, I mean, it it, it doesn't make it any better. Like, you know, it's all shitty. It's a fucking shitty uh, industry and a fucking shitty country and a fucking shitty world. But um, like, you know, like, you know, the guy fucking lost his job over it, which is funny because he's a Bush and it's nice that Bushes lose their jobs. But, (laughs) If more Bushes had lost their jobs sooner, we'd we'd have a better world. You guys what should would do commentary for to catch a predator segments. That's not a good idea. What? I said, what would you have done in that situation? If I was going, well, that? dude, I'm weird. I would have been like, I, I I really do believe if Donald Trump had said that to me, I, I would have in the moment been like, dude, that's a fucking disgusting thing to say. Are you kidding? Like, I I just, yeah, I wouldn't have gone with it. I probably wouldn't have been listening. Yeah. You you would have been like, you, here, here's my impression of you in that moment. Huh? What? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you yeah. <laughs> Which, that you can't get fired for that. They're like, you heard him say, huh, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
Zach is a liar. I don't know. I don't think I'm lying. I, dude. I, I don't. I don't think so because Zach is uh, like randomly confrontational like that. I am. I am, dude. On our uh, when we were shooting the uh, the Sasquatch documentary, my my other producers were like, "Dude, you can't just be like, <laughs> you can't just fucking tell people they're wrong to their face, bro." <laughs> like I would like I was like interviewing this this guy who was like the preeminent Sasquatch like Bigfoot professor. I was like in his office, like went to, we flew to Utah to like go interview him in his office. And he's like showing me all these molds. He's like the authority on Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and this is like, blah, blah, blah. He's like, and this is the same Sasquatch here. It's the same species, same individual. And he's holding me these two things. I'm like, these look nothing alike. Like this is like three, this is like way smaller than that. And he's like, well, because the plaster has warped. And I'm like, <laughs> the plaster doesn't warp though. It's plaster. He's like, well, and like my, my friends were like, we got in the car and they're like, you can't do that, dude. You got to Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Have, uh, is, is this an okay thing to ask? I mean, like, is it okay to, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. It's fine to make fun of Bigfoot, right? I don't give a shit. Yeah. Has, I mean, does anyone ever ask these guys or like, it's, this is like that. Does anyone ever say like, who cares? <laughs> That's a good like, question. Like, what if there's a Bigfoot? Like, it really doesn't affect anything whatsoever. I mean, because there's obviously not a lot of them. They are obviously, unless we can, like, ground their bones down and make some medicine. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like maybe sense. China will figure something out to do with the Bigfoots. But, like, you know, like, this is, who cares? You yeah. Know? Nobody ever says that to them. I uh, I went to a Bigfoot conference in, in Washington, like a Bigfoot convention where it's like all these fucking idiots all gathered together to just like celebrate their delusion. And uh, holy God, it was it was amazing. It's I actually recommend it. It is not boring. You will you will be entertained. Yeah. Well, it's just a freak show. I'd it's a freak show. Like, I mean, like, OK, so a Bigfoot is like basically like a bear ape. You know, like that's what we're talking about here. Like it's a bigger ape, you know. Like, do you know how different a woolly mammoth is? You know, like a woolly mammoth is like huge. It's an elephant, but it's, you know, it's like, and so like if that existed, if they found a woolly mammoth in like the Amazon Mm -hmm. or something, it would not change one fucking thing. Right. Bigfoot toes give you huge erections. <laughs> okay. That's why all the uh, rhinos are dead is because everybody thinks that if you kill a rhino and you uh, eat its horn or whatever, you don't have, uh, you, yeah. you, know, you can get boners, you know? Somebody says QAnon is the result of people being too nice to nut jobs for too long. I 100% agree with you. In fact, in my Bigfoot travels, so, so if you don't know, I just, I've spent the last two years making a, a doc series for Hulu that's going to come out about Sasquatch stuff. When is it coming out, by the way? I don't know. We picture locked oh. last week. We're done. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but, uh, dude, the, the, the Trump QAnon Bigfoot thing, if that was like a Venn diagram, it would just be one circle, man. They are, they are all in. The first time I heard about Q, I was like in some squatcher's kitchen, and his wife was like offering me coffee mugs. And she was like, would you like this mug? And there was like a Q on it. And I was like, sure. And she's like, do you know about this? I was like, a Q, the letter Q. She's like, you don't know about Q. I was like, I, I no, like they, it's doesn't not an entertaining story, but um, dude, it's the same thing. They want to believe, like Bigfoot people, whether there's evidence towards Bigfoot or not, like they get like this charge out of the fact that they believe something that the rest of the world doesn't believe. Like that is the value. The value is not right. whether it's real. It's that this is something that defines me, my belief yeah. in this thing. And I totally think that is like the same shit for like Q people. Yeah. People don't get like the only, the only reason, like there are some things that are, there are a lot of things that are, 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 are conspiracies and stuff like that, but it's all based off of money. It's all making money. You yeah. know, if there's no money behind it, that conspiracy theory is bullshit. Like, well, what's you know, the money like, behind Q? I, I I don't get. It. How is this Q dude getting rich? I don't think he is. I'm saying there's no money in it. Oh, sorry, like, I, sorry, dude. I must have missed the first part of what you. Yeah, said. yeah. No, I, I I'm saying like you know like you you want to talk about like you know uh, uh you know 
a cabal of people who you know uh you know orchestrate world events behind the scenes yeah because businesses are huge like businesses are kind of more important than countries so like these guys basically have more power than your presidents or world leaders and they can influence them but like you start talking about like um oh like uh bigfoot's real be like if bigfoot was real like one of these fucking evil companies would uh, uh, find him and they would charge you to see him. Like there's no, there's no reason to keep Bigfoot secret. Yeah. You know, like, you know, it, 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 it's all money. Uh, yeah. The, the idea that all these squatchers think it's a government conspiracy is just so ridiculous, dude. Like, do they think that the government is able to influence like these local cops in Podunk, Washington state and like make sure they're in on it? Like, that's not how it works, man. Like those no cops can. are like just as conspiracy theory weirdos. They hate the government just as much as anybody else. It's fucking bullshit. What's the craziest conspiracy theory you believe? And actually, as I ask that, I realize I have to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to, I'm going to, that I believe like, in. Yeah. 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 Can, can I ask that and then go to the bathroom yeah, let me and come think back on in it. 60 I seconds? I don't believe in much, dude. Okay. All right. All right. Would you do a 24 hour live stream leading up to the Mars release like you did for Trevor special? Yeah, maybe that's actually kind of a fun idea. Like in shifts where we'd like tag in, tag out. My friend thinks the CIA plants celebrities. Like they like, m the CIA makes movie stars. You know, I don't think that happens today, but I wouldn't be surprised if in the past the government has like backed certain celebrities. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Q started as a troll. Get on Cameo. We should get on Cameo. That's not a bad idea. Zach's getting paid off by big. I missed it. Big Squatch. Yeah. Will Baked Beans get a cameo account? That's a great question. Tomorrow, I think we should make him. That's a good idea. Seven Eleven was an inside job. That's that's not very funny. Zach, you saw Joey Ramone in New York. Did you talk? Did you talk to him? No, I did not talk to him. Run an ad. Good call. Good call. Thanks, bruh. This is a good time. Well, there's a poll on, or am I bugging? Oh, I can't run an ad for another minute. That's weird. Huh? I don't know. They they changed the ads system on Twitch. I don't fucking know how this works. Uh, Comrade Yaf donated. He says, my favorite example of Theseus' ship is when the original lineup of punk death rock band TSOL got sued by the continuing entity and hair metal band TSOL after they reunited. I don't think that's the same thing. Uh, Def Jam donated 50 bucks. He says, hype for Mars. Also ready to see Civil War on drugs. Thanks, bud. Lunar. Lunar Elephant donated. He says, what do you think about making some sort of best of the week clip video every week? Uh, I mean, I don't know how we would do it. If you make a best of the week clip, Derek, we will feature it on Self Select Saturday. I think that'd be great. But I, I, I certainly, like, I'd have to watch all of Timmy and Sam's streams and, like, find a moment. I, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Q is literally just the guy who runs 8chan, you guys. Jim Watkins, look into it. Go read about butt sec and what the... I don't. I, I, I don't. I can't go down the rabbit hole of who is Q. It's just so not interesting to me. Uh, oh, that cult was called Holy Hell. Yes, thank you. Holy Hell is a good one, dude. Uh, yo, Zach, you gonna bang Virith? Oh, yeah, Virith. Well, I'm not hyphen. Let's see. I'm, I, I kind of hope so, man. I kind of hope so. Somebody <laughs> says, Sam's streams suck. Timmy's streams are superior. Okay. Hot take. Think about Trevor's question. Right. What what conspiracy theory do I believe in? Well, it's got to have something to do with JFK. Because clearly I don't think Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. I, I don't know the fucking answer, though. Man on the Moon, Three Slaps? What the fuck does that mean? Theseus' ship is a thought experiment about material... Oh, I can't read it. Materialism versus immaterialism. So the question of the two TSOLs is which one is the real? No, because they didn't exchange members, right? Did they? It's just, unless I'm totally off base. Jack Ruby fucked it all up. Or did he make it so much more compelling? You know what I mean? Did anyone have a convincing Bigfoot story? Dude, I'll tell you this. 
I interviewed for an hour and a half Bob Gimlin, the dude who filmed, well, Patterson filmed it, but Gimlin's, the Patterson-Gimlin film of the famous Bigfoot crossing the river. I listened to that guy for an hour and a half. I peppered him with questions. It was not convincing. And that's, that's the most compelling evidence. That's the one everyone cites is that's why Bigfoot has to be real. Nah. Uh, yeah, I just got back. Bigfoot's real? Uh, no, Bigfoot's not real. So my, oh. my um, have you heard the Strokes record yet? Yes, I liked it. Um, okay, so the conspiracy theory that I think the wildest one that I believe in is I think that the JFK, and I don't really know what the deal is, but I think that clearly Oswald was not alone in the assassination of JFK, and I don't know if it was the Mafia or the Cubans or Lyndon Johnson or who. I think you you think it was Lyndon Johnson, right? Uh, um, or George W. Bush, or George H. W. Bush. I mean, George H. W. Bush was the uh, worked for the CIA. He was in Dallas. He's never been able to explain why he was in Dallas that day. He had no reason to be there. Um, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's in a hundred years, no one will say the official rec, uh, the official story of the JFK assassination. That was a coup. That was. You, you know, you, like, oh, you're convinced that it was a coup. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was by LBJ. That's that's who I think is the most likely. Um, like a lot of people wanted him dead. A lot of people had reason to to kill him. You know, like after he botched the Bay of Pigs, like people thought that you know people there was a, a huge fear of communism, and people thought that this guy was going to sink the country you know, kind of thing. So there's a lot of people who wanted him out. He also, like his father stole the election for him and with the help of the mafia and the mafia, and then he, and then Robert turned around and started like really cracking down on the mafia. So the mafia was pissed. Every, there's lots of, one of his last speeches was that he was going to break the CIA into a thousand pieces. You mm -hmm. know, like everyone had motive to kill this guy. Um, I've heard from, uh, like someone who's actually a, a, a real big expert, like in, in this field, like who's like looked into a lot of this stuff like that. Um, she's like done like documentaries on it and everything like that, that what she believes happened was um, Oswald did act alone um, and shot him because he was mad about, you know, Cuba and stuff like that. But then the uh, CIA realized how bad it looked that he was a cia person because he was oswald was a cia operative uh -huh. like you know um and so they lied about that and then that is what makes all the inconsistencies and why it's become all this thing is because the cia is tries to try to distance themselves from one of their agents who went rogue and shot him wow was oswald really a marine he was a um I don't know. I forget. I was, was watching Full Metal Jacket last night. He was like doing that that speech about Charles Watt. Is it Charles Watson? Charles, I think so. And and Lee Harvey Oswald. Those like he was talking about how they learned to shoot in the Marines. Somebody yeah, he was he was know. he was hooked up. Like he was, you know, he went to live in Russia for a while. Yeah. Like he got married in Russia. He like denounced his, um, you know, citizenship, and they like welcomed him back with open arms. He was like, he was a CIA guy. Yeah, interesting. You remember there's that, I, I read that book in college, uh, Behold a Pale Horse by Bill Cooper, which is like right. crazy conspiracy theory, right? But yeah. one of the most interesting parts of that book was he talks about how the, you can, the, the person who actually killed JFK was the driver of the car. And if you watch the Zapruder film very closely, you can see right. it. You, and, and Trevor, will you, do me, will you pull it up? Let's watch it right now. And film. I remember, dude, I was studying computer animation at the time and I pulled like a remastered Zapruder film up and you can see the driver turn and as his hand goes like this, JFK's head goes back and I tapped the guy next to me. I was like, dude, tell me if I'm bugging. Do you, does it look like the driver is shooting him? And he watched it and he goes, you did that. I was like, no, I didn't. He's like, you fucking did that. And he like went, he thought I'd like painted it in. Dude, um, I remember when you, you came back to the dorms after that. Why? What happened? Cause you were like, you guys gotta watch this. You're like, you like, it was, it was like what we did that night. You were yeah. like, he did it, he did it. Like, yeah, yeah. And you watch yeah. it, and it doesn't. Somebody says, don't watch that on the stream. 
TOS. Oh, uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. It might be. I mean, it is a death. How about this? Everybody go on your YouTube and watch it and, and chime in. If it looks like if it looks like the driver of the car turns around and goes like this. And and right at that moment, his head goes back. It's crazy. You know what? You know what I've also heard is that, uh, and this is insane. I don't believe this, but like in that same vein, that Jackie was in on it. Jackie. Oh, that's um, ridiculous. But she's like, like when he goes down, they're like, she takes a gun, shoots him. She takes a then, gun and shoots him. Yeah, because his head goes back like that, and then she throws the gun out the back of the car, and that's why she goes like. <laughs> that's not in the that. video. I'm not saying it's real. I'm just saying. That is insane. Could you imagine? I went down there to Dealey Plaza. We did a show in Dallas. Uh-huh. And so I went I went a day early um, to uh, just because I wanted to go to Dealey Plaza. And I I, um, I went there and there was like a, you know, borderline homeless guy. Like there, it's a whole industry down there. And so like he was like, he's like, you want to, you know, take a tour? I'll show you around for like 40 bucks. And I was like, sure, that's what I'll do. Like I'll, I'll pay this guy 40 bucks like. You know, he'd take me around and show me everything. And he was showing me everything. And he was like, and this is where, you know, they shot from that. And you get there and you look up at the the window. And like now they say that, you know, like there, there's trees that aren't there anymore. You know, so like there, now it's kind of a clear sight. But supposedly back in the day, there were these trees. So it was like, you, and you're looking at it, you're like, I guess kind of. Yeah, I guess it works like that. And I made some joke about how it not being real let Oswald shot him and the guy goes oh you want to know the real shit and I'm like yeah and then right, and then I, and then I went on the greatest tour I've ever been where he was like running around he's like these motherfuckers say that the, you know like a bullet ricocheted off that thing came back like you know and he was going around like he was like worked up and it was awesome it was like the best 40 bucks I ever yeah. spent well you know what's interesting is remember in um did you see the movie JFK obviously you did yeah Kevin Costner's making this amazing point in that movie where he's like, why would Lee Harvey Oswald, a trained military sniper, not take the shot when his car is coming towards the suppository down? It's a, it's a, it, you've got, it's such an easy line of sight. It's an easier yeah. shot. Why would he wait till he's going horizontally away from him? Like any sniper is going to hit him here where he's essentially stationary as yeah. opposed to here where it's like, that's, that's impossible. Like it doesn't make yeah. any sense. You want to get into weird stuff is start looking into Joan Crawford and uh, JFK too. Why? Because Joan Crawford supposedly was the one that made fun of him for having a roof on his car the night before. <laughs> at, at, at a party she was at with LBJ. Amazing. Yeah. Wait, I got to tell the Johnny Carson, Joan Crawford story. Mm. Which I think we've told on this stream, but I got to do it again. It's so fucking funny. So I was reading Mike Reese's book. He's a, he's a writer for The Simpsons. But before he wrote for The Simpsons, he wrote for The Carson Show. And he said that uh, Johnny Carson realized over time that he would always get a big laugh when he teased Joan Crawford for being a bitch. And he would also get a big laugh whenever he made a joke where the punchline involved chicken McNuggets. And yeah, because like, it was a new product. It was a new product. It was a new product. And, he, and he, whenever he made fun of chicken McNuggets, he would like, they would get a huge laugh. So the writers were like, dude, if we could find a way to combine a Joan Crawford joke with Chicken McNuggets like we'd fucking crush. And so they wrote this joke and Johnny goes out on stage. He's like, uh, Joan Crawford is uh, sponsoring a new product by McDonald's. Apparently they're going to be calling it Bitch McNuggets. <laughs> it's the best. And he said, Bitch McNuggets. And the audience went so batshit crazy that like Johnny had to like wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and like try and settle them down because they just lost their fucking brains. Like it's a they, good I think they joke. had to cut to a commercial or something. It's such a good joke. Bitch McNuggets, dude. Bitch McNuggets. Put it on a tombstone, man. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah. Uh, someone said, keep, someone keeps saying, have you read Mortal Error? No, I have not. I, I do know that theory, though, that the uh, Secret Service a- actually shot him. Um, I find that to be the least convincing because so many people wanted him dead. Um, what uh, what did you think of the movie In the Line of Fire with Clint Eastwood? I remember liking it as a kid. I don't remember uh, like I, I remember uh, the plastic gun was rad. Yeah, John Malkovich rules in that movie. And the elevator that they um, mm-hmm. you know that the, the horse. So like that elevator. It's also Terminator goes in that elevator with a horse. And uh, True Lies. 
same elevator. That elevator is right across from my office. So I, I watch that thing go up and down every day. So I'm always thinking of those two movies. Ah, cool. Yeah. Did you like it? As a kid, I loved it. As a, yeah. I saw it in the theater. I was like 16. I was like, this is the greatest thing in the world. So wait, wait, is that the, your biggest conspiracy theory? That um... I mean, I, I, I think so. Mm-hmm. I always think the... that corporations are up to no good. Right. I don't, I don't trust anything. That, that corporations are doing. But I, I just don't think that the government does all this shit. I just think the government is so incompetent and can barely do anything right that the idea that like the moon landing is going to get faked by the, these fucking knuckleheads and they're all going to keep their mouth shut. I just don't... Dude, they leak, leak, leak. They can't do anything. Like, they, mm-hmm. I just... I don't buy it. That, that to me would be more impressive than if they sent a rocket to the moon. It's usually a lie that they cover up and it makes a bigger thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like my, my, my uh, opinion on the, um, the moon landing is, is that uh, it wasn't live. Sure. That's, it, that, that's what it was. It wasn't live, but they pretended it was. And, and it was because it was a PR thing and they wanted to have this moment. Also, 1968, like ripped the country apart. Like morale was low. They were trying to basically like have this one rallying moment that would defeat like the, the communists and all this stuff like that. So, they had to be like, oh, this is live, but it was pre-recorded. Like, because when you start to look into it, like, you know, the, the way that they presented it, like nobody could have the feed. They projected it on a wall and every news agency just had to aim their cameras mm-hmm. at the projection. So there could be no original copy of it. And then they lost the original copy of it. Right. How would you lose the most, the crowning achievement of humankind? Like, you know, you wouldn't save it. You wouldn't like, you know, like have a couple copies of it. Like, you know, it's so bullshit, but it's because they're trying to like cover up the fact that it wasn't live, Yeah, you know, like, because they didn't want to like have these guys die on camera and like, you know, same with tower seven. The whole reason everyone is like suspicious about like a nine 11 is because they won't admit that they, uh, you know, they, you know, pulled down Tower 7. Wait, did they pull down Tower 7? Yeah. What? They, they, they were like, I remember hearing it on the news. Like, they're like, we're going to have to, dis- we're going to have to take this building down. Like, it, it might've been New York one or anything like that, because we were there, like, you know, and I remember them talking about it on the, uh, like the, uh, the, the radio and stuff like that. Um, like after like, the first two fell, then they were talking yes. about it? Yeah, they're like, there's been so much damage. People are like, oh fuck, abort, abort, abort. Like, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah, I'm. I by the way, I I do not agree with any of this shit. But keep going. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're like, I, oh, I think we that... gotta pull that tower down right now while all the rubble's happening. We gotta get in there right oh. away, guys, and blast this fucker. No way, dude. All right, scratch that. How about this one? <laughs> uh, you, Wait, do you, you think believe that... that? You don't believe that, dude. Come on. You don't believe oh, it. I, be- I believe it as much as I'll be like, all right, scratch it. Move on to the next one. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to fill gaps here. <laughs> do you remember, uh, do you believe that those guys said, yes, r- let's roll, like in the airplane, and they took that airplane down, that third one? Or do you think we fucking shot it down? I think we shot it down. Yeah, we shot that down. So they're gonna, they're lying. they lie about little things. Yeah. You know, and then it becomes like a big... Yeah. No, so they're like, no worries, Trevor. It makes sense. After all that carnage, that building was unsafe. Dude, they're not going to spring into action to go TNT a building within hours of these two falling. Like, all the resources are like, let's get these corpses out of here. Let's save people. Not let's go TNT that unsafe building next to this disaster zone. That's ridiculous. Oh, you know what I do believe, though? Okay. (laughs) I believe that we... uh, we, um, as a country, uh, we have a habit of getting a piece of information. Uh, like, I think we knew the Lusitania was going to sink. I knew the Germans basically took out an ad where they're like, we're going to fucking sink this ship, you know, like, don't be supplying stuff like that. And so I think that there is a, a um, attitude that our country and probably a lot of countries have where they're just like, fuck around and try out and see what happens like you know like great like if they bomb this thing we can get into world war one 
Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's reports of, of scouts seeing the bombers coming from Japan to Pearl Harbor, you know, and they're like, let them do it. Yeah. You know, like that'll get it. That'll, that'll help our thing. And so like, I don't doubt that. I mean, because we have intelligence in all of these. And that's the one nine 11 conspiracy that I'm leaning towards. Like maybe, I don't know where like, they're like some people in the intelligence community were like, this is going to happen soon. Yeah. He's going to, he's this, this, ragtag group they want to take down the world trade center with planes and then they're like eh, we'll let them you know because we'll fuck i don't know if the idea if the idea was let them because then we can go to war i don't know that that's i'm i'm leaning towards doubt it but like i don't know i don't know uh ronald reagan's administration was responsible for the challenger that's actually true i don't think so I don't think Ronald Ronald. Reagan had any benefit of the Challenger disaster. When did he get Alzheimer's? Like right away, right? Like Like he got after the. I think it was like right at the end of the first term. I think his whole second term, he was just like, he was done. Yeah. And I I remember as a kid because I I vaguely remember Ronald Reagan uh, being president, and everybody was like, he's so old. You know, the guy was like seventy. Yeah, like it's insane. Like everyone running for president now is is like ten years older than him. You, you. One thing I will never take from from Donnie Trumpy is that that motherfucker is vigorous, dude. He has a I don't work know ethic and a drive that is superhuman. It's weird. It's it's such a um, maybe not a work ethic because he golfs so much, but he's got an energy. No, the guy's got a work ethic, man. Like it, it, he it, like it, he's doing all these things like i i don't have that energy now no like he has more energy than than me for sure we can't we can't get three videos up on a youtube site or in a week like you know he's going all this fucking shit and he's 70 some years old and he's fat as shit and he's like not eating healthy like yeah. i don't get it like you know no it's amazing it's amazing and people are like yeah he watches tv six hours a day he doesn't sleep dude he sleeps like three hours a night how the fuck does he do it my back is killing me like one week I've been sleeping three hours a night. I'm a wreck. I'm yeah. a mess. Like I can't, I couldn't do one rally. Like Jesus, dude, we got to get your back sorted, man. What's, what's, what's the solution here? A massage? Booze? Really? <laughs> that's, how, that's how I'm fixing it right now. All right, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like, um, I thought about like, uh, like going on, like trying to get like sharper image to see those, those back guns like yeah. you know those things but that i don't know like i um just promise I, uh, me you're not gonna go on painkillers no 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 That's uh although my writing partner was like take four advil at night just do it once you know he's like that that might help so once i don't know yeah because he had the same thing like a month ago i think it's stress i think it's uh i think it's just stress but like yeah I don't know. I don't do know you feel do. like 2021 will be less stressful for you than 2020? No. No? No. Hmm. I think it'll be worse. But that's the way to think of it. <laughs> what do you, mean? you know? You should always think that the future is going to be worse. Oh, God, Trevor. Because then you could be pleasantly surprised, but you're not going to be like, oh, like when it happens, you're like, yep, that's what I thought. Oh, you know? my God. What an attitude. Do you always think that the, everything's going to be great? No, but I, I, I certainly don't think everything's going to be worse. Oh. When have things ever gotten better? I don't know. <laughs> hey, what a great point. Um, I don't really think about in the future that way, though, in terms of better or worse. I truly don't. Like my brain doesn't go there. I don't know. Right? Really? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Well, I dwell on it. Yeah. Death awaits us, yo. Let's fucking go. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'm more afraid of death. I'd rather stay in this fucking hellscape than die. Uh, let me do. Uh, let me run an ad. Running an ad. By the way, if you sub, you don't watch the ads. Just saying. Just saying, guys. Here we go. But I've heard the ads are good. Oh, we can't start an ad this time. Try again later, it says. All right. I don't... Twitch, fix your shit, man. What are, what are you doing? Run standard ad? Nope. Can't do that either. All right. Oh, no, I am. All right, cool. 
Run Like Jackalope donated. He says, we watch every week. Keep it up. Thanks, guy. Register Your Homestead donated. He says, watched Sam's stream on Wednesday and we stared at t-shirts the whole stream. So glad Newsboys is back. You all are on fire tonight. Thanks, man. Um, Wait, what was Sam's? Oh, right. They did a sports boy thing, right? I don't know. So that's fun that Sam's doing a stream with Greg. That's cool. That's cool. I like Greg a lot. Um, yeah, and that's good. They both like sports. You and I don't really care about sports. I don't care about sports. Why don't you care about... I, I can tell you why I don't care about sports. It's just because, boring to me. Yeah. It's just all the same. Dude, if I watch a basketball game, it's just like... It's just, I, my brain just goes to mush. I'm just like, they're just, now they run this way. Now they run that way. Now I, I don't care. Do you like gambling? Football I can kind of get into. Why don't you like it? Um, I always thought it was because I grew up in the middle of nowhere where there was no teams. So like, I was one of, my mom had eight kids. My, my, my mom had eight kids. My mom was one of eight kids. Um, and we all live within five miles of each other. So I was one of 17 cousins mm-hmm. that were all around the same age, all boys, except mm-hmm. for two. So me and 15 kids, my age, were all, you cousins think you'd be all into sports, not a single family of that group ever got into sports. Yeah. Good for you guys. Like, no, I mean, it's just, it just was like weird. I didn't honestly, Sam is the first person that made me realize how important sports were to people. Like, cause yeah. it was like, when I got to college, Sam is like, love sports, you know, cause it's like, it means something like it, it, there's a, it's like rooting for your city or something. But it was like, it was like, huh, how That's weird. How- this is, this is like, cool, I guess, you know. And it's weird. Cause like, I've always had in high school and stuff, it was very clear in my high school. Like the kind of kids that like sports were like, not my kind of kids. My kind of kids were into like bands and movies right. and like comedy and, and like art. Right. So I kind of when I like became an adult, I had this and it's not an accurate notion, but I had this this idea that like if you like sports, you're not a creative person. And then I would like hear interviews with people like Philip Seymour Hoffman, who's like, you know, clearly a genius talking passionately about how much he loves sports. I'm like, oh, I guess I was wrong about that. I just. Yeah. I don't know. Well, my wife is obsessed with sports. She is. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. What is she obsessed with? Philly like she's what? all she's all about like the Eagles and all this stuff so, like, so it's Philly? like she's not from Philly uh family is uh, her family is like yeah. so like you know it's always on and I'm just kind of like I don't I don't I don't get it get like you know but here. but it's also I feel the same way with gambling like do you like to gamble I do like to gamble not like bad okay. but like I enjoy it yeah but I, I enjoy. Like, I don't want to watch anyone else gamble. But when I gamble, it's like, dude, you get fucking. Dr- it's drugs, dude. You get a rush. I don't get anything from it. Wow. Uh. Yeah. Someone says, "Tell your wife I'm sorry about the beating the Saints will give the Eagles. She's used to it. The Eagles. I mean, they're. Uh, what I do know is that uh, her teams don't win a lot." Stanley Kubrick said movies could not achieve the amount of emotion sports do. Like that blows my. I mind. I buy that. I buy that. Uh, yeah, I don't like, think he's wrong. Yeah. I I, I, you know, I watch, like, I actually think that there's something dead inside of me <laughs> that, 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 that I'm, I'm missing out from the human experience of, of being like, you know, it, 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 we're here for a small amount of time. And then we go, fuck knows, you know, but like, I don't think I'm getting the whole experience because I don't have anything that I, like, when you watch these people watch their teams, they they cry they get yeah. excited the emotional roller yeah. coaster of it no, nothing can make me feel like that yeah you it's know. true yeah now when you go to a live sports game do you, do you get wrapped up in it because I've definitely like cheered at, at like in a stadium and been like yeah and like high fives and stuff like that and, and it's like by the way I don't know anything about these teams I don't know any you know but yeah. in that hour and a half or two hours I I can get into it. No. no, like, I mean, like, 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 yeah, like, like, hey, like, I want everyone around me to be happy, mm-hmm. you know, um, so whatever <laughs> team they, whatever team they want, I think we'll have a better night if uh, everybody like wins, but like, it doesn't matter to me at all. It's, it's fucking, it's fucking Sasquatch. Yeah, I, I, you I know? hear you. It, it doesn't it, affect it me at nothing. all. It means yeah. nothing. I can't understand how people will riot when their team loses. It's mm. like, dude, a fucking team lost. All those guys are fine. 
They're all rich. They're okay. Like, who gives a shit, dude? Yeah. I mean, I honestly think it's a little silly that adults are playing a game for a job. Well, we're sketch comedians, dude. I think that's silly. <laughs> yeah, they riot when they win, too. Good point. It's insane. It makes no sense. And, and again, I'm not dissing sports. I wish I cared about it. I wish I liked gambling, you know? Mm-hmm. Because I get super bored in Vegas when we go with people. <laughs> I went to your bachelor party. I went bowling the whole time. Yeah, we all gambled and had the best mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And you bowled alone. It's so funny. So was, I don't think it's any different than getting emotionally involved with a good movie. If I can cry over a movie, I can cheer over a sports game. Who's crying over a movie? I, come on, you've never cried in a movie? No. Are you kidding? You've never gotten teary-eyed in a, watching a movie ever well hold on you're being very judgmental so let me think <laughs> you know i'll say recently if i if i watch something where uh they're like um you know like little kids are in jeopardy i'm like i don't want to watch this right you know but no not like teary-eyed wow. Not like emotional, like not know, even on a plane. Like if it's going, if 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 it's like bad turbulence, and I think we're gonna crash. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I meant. No, everyone. What do you, says, what do you mean? What everyone says when you watch a movie on a plane, it's like being high. You're just for whatever reason on a plane. Like it's movies are funnier, they're sadder. Like they just grip you mm-hmm. more. I don't know why. You know, I watched Philomena on a Uh plane and i thought it was great and Uh then like uh because i had a screener and i was going back to my uh parents house for christmas and i was like you guys gotta watch this thing it's so good and then i watched it i was like yeah it's not that good yeah like it's it's like weird like watching a movie on a plane is like smoking a joint and watching a movie it's not but no i don't you're not crying about like because they're they're the actors you know like but like it's it's a story it's emotional it's like i don't know i i've definitely definitely cried in movies like in like just in public, like you're crying. I mean, just in what do people do well, around? It's usually, you I'm on my couch that. with my wife or something. What does she do? Usually, it's hitting her the same way. We'll be like, "That got me," and she'll be like, "It got me too." That's how you're both crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, man. That's cool. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Trevor acting like he's never cried. I've cried. I've cried. I'm 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 honestly not good at it, but like I yeah no I've cried. I just haven't cried at a movie. I, I know. I know. Thank you. Thank you, David. Mark. I can't read it. Mark Austin. He's like has tre- how has Trevor never heard of this? Yeah, it's like it's like you're acting like the concept of someone crying in a movie is like it's totally new to you. Like you've cried in a movie? Why? It's like dude, no, this no, is no. a very normal thing. No, no, please, like. To me, it's me being more uh, like I know people cry at movies. But you're surprised like, that I would cry at a movie. Exactly. My, my, my being like, really? At a movie is is specifically to Zach. It's Got not it. like I know. Like, look, everyone who goes and buys those books at the airport that read like Da Vinci Code, I know they're crying at every movie they see. Right. Like, but I'm surprised <laughs> that you're crying at movies. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. I know we we've learned a lot about me today. I cry at movies on the couch with my wife, and and I'm I have little dick energy, so I can't pee at urinals next to people. <laughs> I'm afraid of getting massaged. Oh boy. <laughs> well, no, I mean I think it's a good thing to cry with your wife. Yeah, you're getting nailed for the the way you pronounce Da Vinci. You said Da Vinci. Guys, I don't know how to talk. <laughs> I know that you know how to say Da Vinci. No, no, I, I never thought I didn't know how to talk until I started this Twitch thing. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's what I'll say. Like, I grew up on a bus. I didn't, I didn't, I, I like, I think oh, I have a combination. give me a break. No, I, have, I think I have a combination of different accents. Like, because, like, I don't know that I There's no the American that says Vegas. <laughs> really? And Da Vinci and Ronald Reagan. Oh, or Ronald President Reagan. Ronald Reagan. You know Ronald- that it's Reagan. You keep doing this. You keep being like, you know, it's one way. And I'm like, 
And then, and then it gets in my head. I'm like, is it that way? But I'm like, that's not the way I've been saying it. The whole world says Reagan and always has. That's what I'm saying, though. That's the other thing. It's like when you say the whole world says it away, that's the way I'm saying it. In no, my it's head. not. Ronald Reagan. You said it right that time. Okay, see? <laughs> oh, my God. Someone says Trevor's a sociopath who pronounces things weird. This has been a great stream. I, I love I, I this I love doing this. <laughs> I think this has been a good one. This is a good news, boys. We didn't get anything I done. I feel very much on the hot seat in this one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, not you. It's these fucking assholes. <laughs> uh, any more news? I don't know. I don't know if there's any more news. Reflobian tubes is going off again. God. Damn it, I'd love to see it. Thanks, buddy. Somebody says, honestly, this might be my favorite Newsboys. You know what? I like to see that. Someone said, Trevor didn't cry during Toy Story 3. He's obviously a robot. I didn't either. I remember Toy Story 3, but I, I was like, bullshit. They're not killing them. Yeah, I didn't cry there's in too that. Mu- there, there's too much money in this. There's not, they're not killing these characters. You know what yeah. else? I didn't think Inside Out was a good movie. I was Inside bored. And I was like, Out. this is so fucking stupid. Everyone loves it, not me. What do you think of Inside? Oh, the one with the emotions. Yeah. It's it's more of, it's one of a more boring one. Someone says like Trevor it. has Aspergers. Maybe I do. I don't know. But what what is the thing with Aspergers? I, I don't know. Aren't they super smart? I'm not that smart. You're smart. You're a smart guy. Mm. You are. Mm. Talk to Amy. <laughs> you don't have common sense, but you're smart. Um. The uh, someone says, mm, Asperger's, it is the funniest sounding it is. It disease is. to have. I'd almost wish I had Asperger's just so I could say it and like pause a lot when I told people, I'm like, I have ass burgers. <laughs> uh, all right, well, what time is it, man? I feel like we're we're, we're the, being... Asperger, the Asperger's joke was that bad, no. like you're. Yeah. No. <laughs> It wasn't good. Like I'll give you that. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are scoring the new the new Pixar movie. Did Trent Reznor scored the fucking Mank movie? It sucked. Yeah. I thought Trent Reznor was cool. You know that David Fincher's dad wrote that script. Did you know that? I do. I think that's why it sucked. I think it is too. I think because he, I, he just I, couldn't see the forest from the trees that this is not well, a good his, script. Well, his dad wanted to make that for 30 years. And and then his dad died, and then he got this overall deal with Netflix, where they're like, "We'll give you two hundred million dollars to work for us for like five years." And then so this is his first thing where he was like, "This is a thing for my dad. I want to do this because this is like," uh, and so that he couldn't actually be analytical like he normally would, mm-hmm. and be like, "This sucks. This sucks. This sucks." Right. Like you know, like kind of thing. So I think that's yeah why that sucked. But it's funny, dude. It's like, I feel like so much of like film critics in the last 20 years, film criticism has turned into trash. Like Mank has like an 88 Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. Like so many movies now are getting praise from critics that are just garbage. Well, it's because there's only, there's only three places now. Like, you know, it's like Disney, it's like HBO and it's like, um, you know, uh, what is it? Viacom's fucking out of luck. They got nothing. Viacom doesn't have a, a chair at the table. Mm-hmm. And so like, there's only like three or four streaming services that are working. And um, so, and they all basically have all these critics in their pocket. So like, yeah, you're seeing this huge thing where it's like, critics love this movie. And then people are like, this sucks. It but, sucks. You know, yeah. But even like, I don't know. I, I just feel like film critics as an, as an art, and I hesitate to use that word, but in general, it's just like, I can't trust Rotten Tomatoes on anything anymore. You know, like it's all tr- There's no barrier of entry. There's no more Pauline Kales. They don't exist. You know, Roger Ebert's gone. Like now it's any fucking dickhead with a laptop gets to have their score factored into Rotten Tomatoes. And everybody sucks movies dicks because of the, the fucking ideology over the, the art. You know, it's like, it's, it's. I would, I, I would, I would posit that they've always been hacks. That like even Roger Ebert was like fucking wrong. He as missed much the mark right. now and then, but I, I think he had thoughtful things to say about movies. Yeah, like you know, but it doesn't mean that like you ever see the one movie he tried to make. 
Oh, but that's that doesn't matter. It's a different skill set. It is a different skill set, but I don't think that you can critique a skill set that you don't have. Like and well, um, that's the that's the fundamental argument. Like you don't have to you don't have to be a chef to know what tastes good. Roger Ebert panned most of Kubrick's movies. Everyone like, panned most of Kubrick's movies. Yeah, but Roger Ebert among them. Like yeah, Roger I, yeah, Ebert was not this amazing reviewer. Like yeah. I have a soft spot for Roger Ebert because in junior high, I read his cover to cover, his like thousand movie encyclopedia, and I feel like it yeah. informed so much of like I learned so much from that book. Roger Ebert is a good essay writer. He is. Like he the the way that he writes, it's like it's digestible. It's like it's like it's fun. Like you know, like that. But like his actual opinion on movies is kind of like. 50 50 which if you're 50 50 then you're not fucking better than anyone else well here's like, why you know. i would say roger ebert is, is a valuable critic it's because whether you agree with him or not he will articulate why he does or doesn't like a movie in a way that's compelling and will challenge you mm -hmm. to come up with your own opinion so like for yeah. example like he loved holy mountain i discovered yodorowsky through reading ebert's essays about it and stuff like that there's movies he wrote like that he panned that his panning of them made me want to see the movie and I, and I knew that just because he didn't like it doesn't mean the movie's bad. And he would acknowledge that too. So I, 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 like, I like him. I think he's, he's valuable. Someone says, Trevor's got to stop saying like. I can't. I do it too much. I have not even noticed that you do that. Oh, I do it all the time. Um, the other thing I do is I say like, the thing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that a lot. I had an old manager who would, who would start <clears throat> every conversation with, here's the thing. And it just, it made my blood boil. Yeah, Fuck I man. do that. I do that. For um, whatever reason, when you do it, it doesn't drive me nuts. I, I, don't, I don't even notice it when you do it. Well, I'm charming. <laughs> uh, you're, oh, you're trying to piss me off? Is that what you said? No, I said I'm charming. Oh, you're charming. Charming, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you with cheers. It doesn't bother me. But you, it does bother you because you brought it up. I love it. Now it's endearing. <laughs> In the last week, it's become endearing. I haven't talked to you in the last week. <laughs> uh, Actually, you that's not true. We probably talk. How often do you think we talk? I bet we talk three times a week. We talk three times a week very shortly. Yeah. Because one of us is always in a, tr uh, like, either me or you are always, like, in a rush. You're busier uh, than me, dude. You're, you're in a rush. But, like, it, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, we, we talk, very, we talk here on this show. Yeah. Um. And then we go to the next show next tomorrow and we, and we like, kind of like, you know, have to like be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, oh, what was I was going to say, I was going to say something. We got to go. It's, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's late. We're, this is, the, this is one of the longest news boys ever. Although we're holding the audience. That's cool. Yeah, man. So he says sociopaths uh, can be very charming. Wait, I want to know who chat thinks is a bigger sociopath. It seems to be a meme with you. I don't think either of us are. Well, I don't think we're sociopaths either, but I, I think yeah. some people think we are. I got to do a poll. Who's the bigger sociopath? A sociopath is someone who... Has no empathy. See, that's not me. I have empathy. Out my ass. I got empathy out my ass. They fucking stole they it. They fucking stole it. Those motherfuckers. Oh, they stole it. No, I have I have empathy all the time. Every day for everyone. It's funny because on this stream, you've come across as a sociopath because you don't cry at movies. But in, in our history, I have done supremely more sociopathic things than you. Like just... You're the one who's always like, no, no, we can't do that to that person. They don't deserve it. I'm, I'm, I think it's safe to mm -hmm. say I have a vicious streak in me that you don't have. I think I have a very clinical morality, but I don't think I get worked up over things. Mm -hmm. I get, you know, worked like, up. like I've never been offended at anything. Like, I, and, and I've talked to people about that and they think it's really weird. But that I'm like, is I've such never... an interesting, fascinating part of you. You've never been offended. No. Like Ever? when I, no. Like, and when I, so basically when I, when people are offended, I'm kind of guessing what it's like. And I, and I, and I get that it's some sort of anger. It's like an anger and a, 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 
a bull, uh, feeling bullied, even though you're not the person that they're talking about. Like, so it's a combination of being bullied and anger. I get that. But uh, no, I've never been offended by anything. What if like, I went why? like viciously in on like your wife's appearance? I think I would immediately go into like, oh, Zach's fucking, something's going on with Zach. Like he's fucking crazy <laughs> right now. Like, you know, like, you know, like. I, I, it's I, true I, though. I, and, and you're telling the truth. Like I, I yeah. know that that's the way you operate. Cause I've been in situations with you where someone has said something to you that I would, if I was in your position, I would have been very offended and very outraged. And I watch you and you do, you do just go like, okay. And you never yeah. lose it. You're just like, well, I'm, it's wild. And I, I, that's the thing. I don't, I don't get why that's wild, I guess. Does that make sense? I mean, it, 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 it's not that it makes sense because it, it, it just it lines up with everything I know about you. I know you incredibly well, but uh, it doesn't make sense to me because it, like we were part of a conversation. I'm not going to say when, but like in, in not too long ago where where someone said something to you that I thought was like if they'd said it to me, it would have been a, a nuke. And they said to mm -hmm. you and you were just like, that's all you did. That was your reaction. And I was like, yeah. it's Trevor. That's just the way he is. All right. It, it's it's tremendously impressive. It's a good, it's a good. That, it's good? Are you kidding? Like, that you're like, you're not a slave to people's bad behavior. You, you're able to just like, to see, to see it for what it is, which is their issue, not yours. It's amazing. It's a superpower. It's a good well now, quality. but 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 now what I'm thinking is like, well, what if I'm wrong? And they're like, uh, uh, how could you? you know, how like, can you be wrong? Right, right, right. There's really no wrong know. there. You're just like, oh wow. Yeah, I don't know, but I like like so I I'm, I'm like it, it's hard for me when people are like, oh, I got offended at something. I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's so weird though, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, okay, like you're angry and you're you know they said a word you don't like. Like I like I, I get it. I get it. Maybe I'm fucking Asperger's. And I people no can idea. say shit. I don't know. I, I don't know. People can definitely say shit that you will be not offended, but you will be like, no, no. Like, you know, you're able to like, that's not how we handle this. We don't say that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's not offend. It doesn't come from a place of offense, though. It comes from a place of like, I don't know where yeah. it comes from. Well, there's a thing. Well, I, I can't talk about that right now. But like, um, there's a thing going on right now where I'm like, I'm like, this is not the right way it should go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to go this way. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because this is how everyone does things. Yeah. You know, but it's not because I care. Right. It's just sort of like, well, this is, th that person is going to feel bad if this doesn't go the way they're expecting things to go. Right. Yeah. Uh, Zeppelin donated 50 bucks. Another 50. Jesus. He says, Led flagship Zeppelin. show crushed it tonight. Thanks, Zeppelin. Fucking A, man. See, I think this was the bad one. Was this good? What do you mean? This episode? Yeah, I think this is where we biffed it. I don't think so. Really? No, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. I feel like it was good. All right. All right. Well, registry home, register your homestead said this was the best one, dude. All right. Yeah, that's that's nice. One. What is register your homestead? That's something, right? That's like a, that's like a I movement. I have no idea, dude. So he says, I don't think Zach's a sociopath, but I feel like... He wish he was to protect himself. You, you, your grammar sucks. Trevor, I can't figure out. I dropped out of psychology. Okay. Wait, did who who won the poll? Oh, shit. I didn't uh I don't think I don't think Zach's a sociopath at all. I think Zach is a very thoughtful person. You, I think Well, the sociopaths can be thoughtful. You won the poll. Uh 66%, 34%. Um yeah, I think I think I think you are a very well adapted person. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I didn't always think that. <laughs> I don't think I was. I don't. First of all, I don't know that I am, but I I I I, I think you are. Wasn't. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's funny. Trevor is a sociopath. Trevor? Zach is just a dick. I like that's it. a funny comment. That's good. All I right, do man. think you're. A, I do think you're a dick. Fair enough. Fair enough. I wear it well though. <laughs> Never yeah, no, it's it's charming. <laughs> Somebody says, I think Zach used to be way shittier than he currently is. I think that's true. I think that's true. That's everybody. Yeah, I think that's part of growing yeah. up, man. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, who buddy. is that not? Who is that not true for? Can you think of one person Darren? that is? He's more of a dick now. No, no, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm he saying didn't like used who? to be a dick. <laughs> he's always been great. Yeah, he's the sweetest man in the he world. He really is. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we always talk about this. It must be so boring, but like, I, I can't, I can't think of a story in my mind where Darren was an asshole. I can't think of it's, one time, dude. It's been a love affair for twenty years, and it's like there's, there's never been a bad moment. Like he is the sweetest. He's the sweetest. You're all. I feel bad for everyone who isn't friends with him because he's honestly the sweetest man in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. How well we, I know Darren as well as one of my brothers. I know Darren better than one of my brothers. Truly, I know him way better. He's never been an asshole. Mm -mm. We spent decade of our of our twenties with this guy all the time, he, in high pressure it, situations. Never, never a problem. Like I like even after Whitey's Kids was done, I toured with Darren and Sam for years, seven, eight years you know, like doing like stuff like that. And there's not one fucking night on the road in shitty hotels. Like, you know, even when Darren got sober and was like the only one not drinking, not a fucking single moment where he was anything but lovely. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, crazy. He is the greatest. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Somebody says Darren stories, please. That's the that's the flip side to the coin, though, right? The flip side to the coin is there's not very many Darren stories. Like, like I've got that story, like where Sam was puking on my toilet on my bathroom floor, and you were guarding mm -hmm. the thing, and it's like Sam, and then Sam flicked me off, and it's that's a funny story because you guys are misbehaving. Darren really no, didn't I have, misbehave. I have a Darren story. Okay. I have a, I have a fantastic Darren story. Let's hear it. He's not gonna get mad at me, right? I'm, well, I don't I'm, know what you're I'm, about to say, but I, 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 mean, I it, can't it, imagine it, he would. It is in no fault to him. Oh, that time he cheated on his wife. Yeah, don't tell that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're all right, you stop me if you think this is bad. All right. Um, we did a show somewhere in the Midwest, and then we and we well, we should take off after this, you know. But like we were we were doing a, a show in the Midwest. Oh, oh no, you can't. Okay. Where, where, where you were in line doing the autograph signings? Yeah. Can't, no. Yeah. Can't, can't do that. No. Yeah. But that was a mistake. It that was, was an nothing, honest mistake. That was an honest mistake. It wasn't anything bad, but it was like, that is my favorite Darren story. Like, you know. Yeah. Rough Lobian tubes. My God. I'm in awe. Thanks, buddy. Jesus. Since the blue ball. I know. I know. I just. I, I'm trying to think funny... if there's a way to describe the incident without, without it being bad. Look, I don't think, I, I think, I think like, I don't think he was in the wrong. Do like, it. You can, I you can do it. it. Just don't, don't act it out. Describe it, was a it but don't okay. act it out. Here's what happened. So there was. And by the way, this is not the forbidden story. There's one. No, no, no. There's the big famous forbidden story. This is not that. We were. Oh. Hmm. We, I remember I we were in Texas. We were in Austin. Yeah, but now, now I'm wondering if it, if it's mean to the other person involved in the story. May I take a crack at it? Go for it. I wish I'm I hadn't just said the shouldn't. name of the city. Uh, let's. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say let's scratch this. It Darren did nothing wrong in it, but it is. It could be. It could be mean to someone who is handicapped. And so that's why I don't want to like go into it, like you know, kind of thing. It was an accident. That's what it is. And uh, let's not. I don't want. I don't want to see this on like you know tomorrow. Like people. Yeah, I don't want people like, ragging on on. on yeah, it, it's just Darren. You know, and maybe we're selling out. Maybe I'm being a pussy, but like I'm also like old and like what if she? What if? What if the person is still a fan and watching? and is not going to like the story being brought up about her kind of thing like you know so that's what it is all right pussy sell out fine <laughs> uh another zach violence story instead are there zach violence stories oh my god yeah violence yeah oh. you loved violence sure i love violence but like but 
I don't feel oh, like wow, I've told a lot things. of violence stories on this stream. No, but the last one you told was the uh, you fighting Jimmy Fallon. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think of good violence stories. Well, you breaking that dude's nose was fantastic, but I've told that. That's not a me violence story. That's a you. That's a. That's. It's not a you violence story. It's a me violence. Yeah, story. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get in very many violent altercations. Is the problem. I'm just. I like to be around violence. Well, our hype train is at seven thirty one. Crazy man. Um, I, I I I led a posse to beat the shit out of a guy once. You guys hunted a man through the streets of New York City, pulled him out of a car, and stomped him as a group. It's pretty awesome. Tell that yeah. story. That's a good story. Uh, is it? I like uh, it. I'll tell it if you don't want to tell it. Yeah, you tell it. I'm going to use the restroom real All quick. Right. We're at a big right. party. House party in Brooklyn. This was like, we were in college. And it was like, there was a band play. I think my band played, actually. Uh, a lot of people. And it was one of those shows that was like at a friend's house. So we were kind of like the home team. Like, like our inner crew, like knew. We, it, you know, we were like the hosts, basically. But it was like totally packed there were you know a ton of people so there are all these strangers that we didn't know and our buddy chris was dating this girl mary and i guess some dudes that showed up grabbed mary's ass in the audience and um and she told chris and chris was like who are they and she pointed to like those two guys there and they were like leaving the party and chris and trevor and our friend rocket fuel followed the dudes out of the party down the block ran after them and as those guys were getting in a cab they pulled them out of the cab and stomped the shit out of them like threw them on the ground and like it was like just like like good fellas stomped the fuck i think chris took his belt off and was like whipping the dude and then and then at the end took their glasses and just like smashed the glasses <laughs> right isn't that yeah rocket fuel did that <laughs> yeah. i mean god damn dude that was pretty wild. Wait, I, I, met, I missed the whole, uh, uh, you told him about Rocket Fuel? People yeah. are talking about Rocket Fuel. Yeah, yeah Rocket yeah. Fuel. Rocket Fuel is the older brother of uh, Zach, the lead singer of Beirut. So we used to hang out with those dudes. Yeah. I think they were there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, those guys were fucking creeps, though. Yeah, those, those, those guys deserved it. You can't go to a party, grab girls' asses, and then like run away. Like You're going to get like, beat up. Yeah, and I was mad. I mean, I'm sure you already told us, but I was mad because they groped my girlfriend. And then I ran into the Chris, and he was like, I'm looking for these guys that grope my girlfriend. And I was like, well, why don't we look for them together? And that's how a posse started. Like, And then just everyone who was friends with us was like, what are you guys doing? We're like, we're looking for these guys that are groping, groping. And then we had a whole group, and we like beat the fuck out of them. It yeah. was great. Good on you. That was a, oh, would you say you were offended? Oh, interesting. Maybe I was angry. I don't know. Yeah. But it was, but that's an assault. It's different than like <laughs> being offended. Like it's different than like, it was like, oh, this, this girl that I care about got assaulted. Like, you know, and this guy think it's, thinks it's fine. You know, it's different than being like, oh, like there was a joke. Or, or like a thing. Yeah. I mean, like, it's yeah, different. like it's, it's different. different. Yeah. yeah. And and did I get it right? Did Chris take his belt off and beat the guy with his belt? Or is that is that not true? I feel like that happened. Somebody did that. I that don't know a, if it was Chris. That was a very Chris. violent night. I remember Hayes was on his way to the to that party, and some dudes rolled up in a minivan and jumped out and just beat the shit out of him. That was hours before. Remember this? They beat the shit out of him so bad he shit his pants. And then they picked what? up a flower pot and smashed it on him. Holy shit. Yeah, it was awful. That was a really horrible neighborhood, man. Yeah. Do you remember Mal got beat up with an umbrella? Oh, I forgot about that. Which well, I always used was, to get beat up a lot. I always thought it was kind of funny, though. Like, And I didn't want to say it because I love Mal. But like, he was like, I got beat up. And you're like, what happened? They're like, they hit me with an umbrella. I'm like, that's funny. Like, you know, like just somebody, like it seems like an old cartoon. Dude, like, one know. time we were at uh, Palace Fried Chicken at like three in the morning, trashed in line getting fried chicken. And, and th this was in a, a Polish neighborhood. And that, that's, I'll tell you, that's the most dangerous fucking people in, in Brooklyn is the fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, this, this fucking 
This fucking Polish skinhead comes and just cuts in front of Mal in line and goes, Excuse me, master. And Mal goes, How am I your master? And the guy turns and just goes, and slapped the shit out of him in the face. Like, spun him around, dude. It was just... Holy God. After, Some people after, have it. Some people just magnetize violence towards them, though. Well, it's the people who just, like, uh, like don't give a fuck and just say whatever they're thinking, no matter when they're drunk. That's who gets hit. I don't know, though, because Hayes is not that guy. And Hayes got jumped, like, four or five times in the two years he lived in New York. Like, bad. And eventually, he's like, Ooh. I'm moving. I don't know what it is about me. But, like, people would walk by him on the street and just punch him in the face. Like, that happened multiple times. Just like, that guy. Bam! It's crazy. I remember, like, uh, when I first moved to L.A., like, and I came back to shoot Whitest Kids, like, the uh, I, I rented an apartment above um, the bodega on the corner of Bedford and Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And there's two Polish nightclubs right there. Fight, and they would get like out. fights every weekend. Oh, it was fantastic. Every weekend, I would just sit in this uh, window and I'd smoke cigarettes and I'd just watch them fight. Like, and also someone would always get hit by a car. Like, it was, <laughs> it was, it was clockwork. Like, yeah. people would get out. They all looked like Eminem because uh-huh. they all had like dyed their hair with that like yellow kind yeah. of thing. Like, you know, and it was like, they would all get out there and just like girlfriends would get mad at them. They'd start fighting each other and then someone would get hit by a car and be fine. It wasn't like, a, it, but it'd be like somebody who got into the street and got hit yeah. by a car. Yeah. And um, it was, uh, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I'd say like, I think I witnessed violence probably once every three months living in New York. Like witnessed a real act of like criminal violence. Would you say that's about your experience? I'd say more. More? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like uh, my my wife, but girlfriend at the time, and I would, would like we'd walk, and as soon as someone would be fighting, we'd stop and we'd like lean up against the wall and just watch it all play yeah. out. Like we were like, oh, 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 shit, let's watch this, you know. And I saw one time this guy got in, into a fight with another guy. They like he'd stepped on his foot in a bodega or whatever, and so they're fighting and fighting, fighting, and the guy goes up to his car, and he opens his car. And we're like, oh shit, oh shit. And uh, he <laughs> He's takes get out. A gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, that's what we're doing. We're like, oh fuck. <laughs> like, and he gets an ice pick out. Oh, like, shit. you know. And then, so like, not an ice pick, an ice scraper, like one of the ones oh, from yeah. the front of the show. And he's got his girlfriend with him. She's yelling. She's like, you're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. And the dude just comes out of the bag, pulls a beer off of his six pack, and whips it at the dude. The dude ducks. It hits his girlfriend square in the face. She's out. That's and amazing. then he's like, you motherfucker. And he attacks him with this ice scraper. And he's like trying to stab him with it. And we're just sitting here like, this is incredible. Like, you know, like oh. it, it, New York is the greatest. Dude, city one time I was in the, I was in a cab with, with uh, Ryan and Mal. And we we're going through Greenpoint. And this was like probably 2002. So it was like Greenpoint was not had not been like cleaned up it was still bad yeah and i remember this we're, we're going down this back road and we're at a stop sign and this dude comes running up and he's like he like runs up to our cab he's like let me in let me in they're gonna get me let me in you guys please please you gotta let me in the fucking cab they're coming and we're like nah dude <laughs> nah dude no <laughs> so we're driving and i'm like not it, not interested yeah, we not don't want interested. to we don't sir we don't want to so we drive half a block and our driver is like watching him in the rear view and he slows down. He's like, oh no. And we all look out the rear window and these fucking dudes caught up to this guy and stomped him within an inch of his life. I'm laughing, but it was like, it was so yeah. vicious. It was shocking. Like it was like stomach turning. Like they were <laughs> kicking him in the face. And, and then the, <laughs> the fucking guy, he gets up and they leave him because he's just like wrecked. He's like, he's like, fucked up and he staggers back to our cab and he goes to the same window but now he's just like he's covered in blood and he's like can i get in the cab now man and, and we're like yeah yeah we'll take you to a hospital and uh. but it was stupid because there's three of us in the back seat so he crawled on top of us and this bloody dude is like laying his head is like in my lap i get blood all over and i'm like oh, oh man i'm like 
It was just like we we wouldn't let him in. They killed him, and then we let him in. It's just so fucking stupid. And like the whole chat's going, "Can I change my vote now?" <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good All one. right. Let's well, end on well, we that. Did, we did what we did. Somebody wanted a violent story. They got it. There you go. Yeah. All right, man. All right, buddy. This was fun. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. See All you right, then. Tommy. Later, dude. Bye. All right, Chad. Should we raid somebody? Who do we raid? Oh, yeah. They want to uh, raid. What's her name? Who? Um, they, people were saying earlier, uh, what's the girl who um, did all the, like, I'm an I'm a internet person? I have no idea who you're talking about. Felicia Day, right there. Who's she? She's like a, she's like, she did like a, 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 a she did like a internet video where she was, uh, she had a series where she was like a, um, a gamer or something like that. It was, it was a, she's, she's, she's like a cool person. She has 2000 oh. people watching her right now. No, oh, they won't care. Travis, how is the new Taylor Swift album? It's very good. Everyone should check it out. Um, they, she does a song with Haim that I like a lot. Oh, um, now I'm 84% says I'm the bigger sociopath. Yeah, but right. Taylor Swift does a song with Haim that is really good. You should check out. We should raid Ron Gina. He's got three viewers. What about Chelsea Manning? Is she on? Yep. I like Chelsea Manning. We all owe a uh, debt of gratitude to Chelsea Manning. Um, I don't know what her name is on the, uh, on the thing. I mean, my God, can you think of a... Of a um, her and Snowden. I'm going to do Ron Gina. He's got two viewers. He's a friend. People <laughs> like him. People want him. All right. Never mind. Give the people what they want. <laughs> Bye. All right. Later, dude. Why is this? Why is this raid not going? Start raid. Something went wrong. What the fuck? Twitch. Oh, everyone's ready. Okay. Raid now. Here we go. All right, my dudes. <clears throat> later, y'all. And stream.